The Benjamin Dixon Show is only possible with listener support. Go to www.patreon.com forward slash the BPD show. After the murder of George Floyd, there was a reverberation that was felt around the world. Millions of people taking to the streets to demand that something change. And now right here in the city of Minneapolis, there are people who are voting on what exactly that change looks like. On November 2nd, folks will head to uh, the ballot box and cast their vote on whether or not they want to see the Minneapolis Police Department continue as it is with potentially some reform or if they want to see the Minneapolis Police Department evolve into a public safety department. Yesterday, we heard from the chief of police on the issue. Take a listen. I'm very intentional in doing my best to keep the Minneapolis Police Department as apolitical as I possibly can. Roughly 21,000 signatures were gathered to petition to have the public safety initiative ballot added next month in November. Minneapolis has 420,000 residents. That is roughly 5% of our population. First and foremost, our officers need support. They need the tools, the equipment, the training and funding to do their jobs. We are at a, criti a critical point of public safety in our city. Well, back in 2018, I went before our city council and I asked for 400 more officers, knowing what we could be up against in the coming years. We're flatlining right now. We are down a third to vote on a measure of reimagining public safety without a solid plan and an implementation or direction of work. This is too critical of a time to wish and hope for that help that we need so desperately right now. As your chief of police, I would not be in favor of this ballot amendment. Here is what I can tell you ballot question number two will not do for you. It will not eliminate tragic incidents between police and community from ever occurring in our city. It will not reduce the disproportionate violent crime disparities involving African American victims that has been a public health crisis in our city for decades. It will not suddenly change a culture of a police department that has been in existence for 155 years. It will not engender trust or confidence in new economic and business development, tourism and entertainment opportunities for this great city of ours. So in essence, the chief of police in Minneapolis is asking residents to vote no. He does not want to see the Minneapolis Police Department evolve into a public safety department. Ben, I know that we, we have covered this. We've, we followed. There was back and forth on whether or not this question was even going to appear on the ballot. Uh, Chief Arredondo pointed out yesterday that about 5% of the population in Minneapolis pushed to get this question on the ballot. And now there's actually some polls that are showing uh, that the city's divided. It, it goes mm -hmm. back and forth between 51 and 49 percent or between 40 and 60 percent, depending on where you look, uh, of people uh, leaning towards evolving mm -hmm. the police department into a system of public safety. Now, this isn't a radical idea. I mean, there are a lot of cities across the country that have public safety departments versus a police department. Uh, ben, mm -hmm. what are your thoughts on this? You know, first, good morning, Georgia. I Yeah, we've been following this. You've been covering it. Uh, we actually had a chance to speak uh, two days ago with Candace Montgomery, uh, the co-executive director of Black Visions there in Minneapolis, and Minister Janae Bates, the comms director for Yes for Minneapolis, and they were speaking exactly about the Yes on Two campaign. Um, and the data that you're sharing, that percentage split, the polling that shows there's like a, a vacillation back and forth between 51% and 49%. That means that it is a rigorous public debate. And, uh, you know, I would like to say shame on the chief for weighing in to try to put his um, weight on the scales, but that's what 
people in that kind of position do. That's what the police system is here for. The police system is not necessarily here for the people. It's here to sustain itself. And so clearly, yes, on two is a budgetary threat to the police department. And so, of course, that chief is going to come out and say, vote no on it when there's a good percentage of the population are saying they're going to vote yes. Well, and the other thing that really concerned me um, after watching this entire press conference was the fact that he really leaned in on the community violence. Mm. And he, he was saying, you know, you black residents in Minneapolis are 400 you know, percent more likely uh, to be killed by somebody off the street than they are to be shot and killed by an officer. Mm. Um, that bothered you me. know <laughs> yeah I, I mean i understand yes minneapolis um while the world turned to this city uh because of what happened to george floyd and then obviously what happened with dante wright um the world is not really following the fact that uh more than 13 children have been shot uh and and, and some killed in the last few months here and and the police says it's because the police department uh, is down to, I think, like a, a third of, of where they're supposed to be. But we know uh, that, you know, police are not like this isn't a new issue. You know, right. Minneapolis was considered murderapolis in the 90s and there was no mm -hmm. George Floyd then, you know. And so while, yes, uh, statistically speaking, you might say that someone who's black in Minneapolis is 400% more likely to be killed by uh, someone off the street than they are an officer. It still doesn't solve the problem that there is a chance they could be killed by an officer because of uh, what has transpired. And, and we're still yeah. learning exactly what's transpired. The department of justice is in the middle of their investigation and we'll learn more once those trials start in the next few months. Uh, yeah. But there has been um, obviously something that wasn't right that led to the DOJ launching that investigation to begin right. with. And so That's it right. just it feels um, it, it feels a, a bit inauthentic to mm -hmm. uh, take to, to take the two issues and pit them against each other. Oh, yeah. No, you hit that spot on. Now, that is a part that I would clearly say the chief should be ashamed of a black man who is parrying the uh, forwarding and parroting is the word I was looking for. He is parroting the white supremacist talking points about black on black crime. I would like to ask this black chief a question. What have you done to stop it? Why are you able to con confidently quote these statistics, but you are in the position to provide public safety? And because you have not only not provided public safety in the form of addressing the violence that is indic is, that is ubiquitous, in black communities across the country. And instead of just instead of just pointing it out, Georgia, why would that black man not point out the fact that crime is literally an economic phenomenon and that the reason we see so much crime in black communities is because we see so much poverty in black communities. And I want to ask that black chief a question. Does he believe that that crime is there because we're black or because we're poor? Because the way he answers that really determines whether or not any policing agency is capable of a policing us. Because you, we got to stop penalizing poverty. People are committing crimes of desperation, especially in a pandemic when the government has completely abdicated its responsibility to take care of us. Well, and the interesting thing is there was a report out by the CDC that homicides are are at like the highest rate um, U.S. records, uh, highest ever increase in nation's homicide rate uh, that that just came out, I think, two weeks ago uh, that we across our country. This isn't an issue that is exclusive to the city of Minneapolis. That's right. Uh, this is not an issue that is exclusive to communities that are um, having these very politicized trials of, of cops who are using excessive or fatal force. This is probably a result of the pandemic that we've been in and people losing their jobs. Jobs. And like right. you said, um, maybe going from living paycheck to paycheck to now not having a check. And yeah, we we know yeah. that that poverty is a direct link to an increase, especially in violent crime. So, right. you know, it um, 
it, it, it's interesting. We heard him say there in the soundbite we played that he was going to try to keep this a political, uh, but it, it just felt very political. And That's right. we'll see. We will see. The people will go out and vote and we will learn November 2nd what will happen um, in the city of, of Minneapolis. Either way, Ben, I, I think one thing uh, regardless, I've, and I've spoken to a lot of people who sit on on both sides of this issue. I've spoken to a lot of people who say vote no, that we need the police, that they deter the violence. I've spoken to Janae as well. I've spoken to a lot of people on the vote yes side uh, who feel like uh, there needs to be this total overhaul. Uh, but either way, one thing is certain on both sides of these issues. People do feel like change is needed in this right. In the police department, they're just not united in what that change looks like. So right. even if the Minneapolis Police Department does not evolve into a system of public safety, uh, there's still reform that is needed to not That's only right. mitigate there being another George Floyd, but to also address the increase in violent crimes. Right. So uh, change is needed. It, it That's is. Right. That's right. And the only other thing is I, I would say about this, Georgia, is that I really do. I really do want across the country, if we are going to be forced to have to deal with police, then we need policing agencies who clearly understand that their job is not to just say, oh, there's nothing that we can do about it except you give us more money. All of these reforms that he's talking about, all the things that that police chief is talking about is going to lead to them getting more money when the problem is the community needs that funding. The programs need that funding. The after school programming needs that funding. The, 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 the job training programs needs the funding that the police have been seizing all this time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll see. It, it will be interesting. I feel like the world is continuing to watch uh, what Minneapolis will do. Um, having a public safety department would allow there to be professionals, uh, whether it's, you know, mental health professionals, um, you know, just different social services. So it's not always police responding when That's folks right. call in and they're having an emergency. Um, but, you know, on the other side of that, people are arguing and saying that it, it puts a, a commission of 14 people um, over the uh, chief of police and um, that that is going to cause even more issues. And so, yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot to come out here, Ben. Um, I'm go obviously going to continue following this through the November 2nd vote and, and we'll see what happens here in Minneapolis. But I understand Absolutely. you have been tracking a story this morning as well. Yes, Georgia. It is one hell of a morning for anyone who wanted something progressive from the Biden administration. Um, a couple of clips and information here about the new bill. The Democrats, according to CNN, has ditched the paid family leave component from their bill on Wednesday um, and it's is taken out of their vast social safety net program and yet another cave to Senate moderates, including Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema. Now, um, here's the problem, Georgia. They have been whittling away at this bill, taking out everything that is meaningful for anyone. They've reduced. I mean, it's in every aspect imaginable. We have now gotten to the point where this is just a piece of paper. Let's take a listen into this clip that gives a better insight into what's going on with this legislation. In her latest Dear Colleagues letter, Speaker Pelosi says she has asked the Rules Committee for a hearing tomorrow to advance the president's agenda. For the average American who just wants to know when these votes might actually happen, what on earth does that mean? They're going to prepare to be able to bring this legislation to the floor once it's ready. There is a big development, though, in these negotiations. We have just confirmed multiple sources telling us that the paid leave provision of this bill will not be included. It has been dropped from negotiations because of opposition from Senator Joe Manchin. Now, remember, that was a 12-week paid leave proposal and that it was scaled back to four weeks in hopes to get Senator Manchin on board, and he's just not done it. Some of my sources say they're not giving up, though, until the bill is written. But for the time being, this big Democratic priority of paid family leave, something that the United States is one of the only developed countries that does not have, will not be in this legislation. Here's how White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki framed the discussions with the press. 
president. Last night, as you all know, uh, the president met with Senator Sinema and Senator Manchin in the Oval Office uh, and continued to make progress on finalizing details as we work toward an agreement. Uh, the president remains open to uh, going up to the Hill. We haven't made a decision to do that, and we are uh, making decisions uh, hour by hour. Senator Bernie Sanders, of course, a key part of some of these negotiations. He specifically wants to ensure that there's a Medicare expansion for both dental vision and hearing and all of this. It's unclear how much of that is going to make it into the final legislation. So the president having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with the senator earlier this afternoon. Now, Georgia, the, there's a lot of information that just came out of that clip, but here's some key components. We went from 12 weeks of paid leave um, to four weeks, and that wasn't good enough for Joe Manchin. Joe Manchin said, I don't want you to have any. I don't want you to have any time paid leave. We're the one, the, the, one of the few developed nations that does not, one of two, that does not have paid leave. And Joe Manchin, who... We caught on his yacht, some of the activists with Act TV caught him on his yacht, living in the lap of luxury, is doing everything that he, and this is a Democrat, mind you. This is a Democrat who's doing everything he can to absolutely harm the American people in the most critical time. And it's not just Joe Manchin. I also want to bring out the fact that enough is enough with these Democrats, because if yeah. you can't get the American people the basics. How can you ask them to go and vote for you in the midterms? Now, I want to share one more graphic before we move uh, forward. This, this is a graphic that gives us a breakdown of all the things that have gotten the, the, the knife. And this is from NBC's national political reporter, Sahil Kapoor. And he's reporting on all of these different policies. He said two year community free college, gone. Clean energy performance program, gone. Guaranteed paid leave, gone. Tax rate hikes on the rich and corporations, gone. So here we are, Georgia, and I just have to ask the question, what was the point of all of us risking our lives during the pandemic to go out and make sure the Democrats got all the power, the White House, the Senate, and the House, and they are not doing anything for us? Yeah. Well, you know, the issue on paid leave is really personal for me mm. because uh, I, I was a news anchor and literally lost my job. I was legally terminated because I wasn't eligible for maternity leave. Mm. And so this is an issue that is deeply personal to me. And uh, because our country does not have something in place, uh, my entire career was derailed, mm. you know. And so when you have that lived experience of how these legis legislations or or how these bills or lack thereof affect right. your day to day life. Right. Like this not only affected my livelihood, it affected my my family, my career trajectory uh, just because I decided to have a baby. And so when you look at uh, being a woman in the 21st century, knowing that you can be legally fired uh, because you're not eligible mm -hmm. for maternity leave, you, you kind of have like this this shock of like, is it 1950? Like what year do we live in? What country do we live in? No, this is America. And we are one, like you said, of only two developed countries that haven't figured this out. And um, I did some organizing on this issue. And what, what I had proposed was just let's get a basic unpaid leave mm. mandated. And then let's build on that and try to get a paid leave. Yes, I, I believe in paid leave, but I think that uh, a family, whatever your family dynamic looks like, if you choose to have a child, that is your human right. And it is protected under the United Nations um, human rights. I think it's like a uh, Cla uh, clause 16, Amendment 16, mm. something like that. Uh, it is your human right to to have a child. And so if it is a human right, how how are there no protections? And so I That's think, right. honestly, uh, in the research I, I have done that a lot of these politicians are not uh, framing uh, this issue correctly. I think if it was framed as a human right, it would move through a lot faster. But unfortunately, pregnancy by itself has oftentimes been classified as a disability or mm. a medical condition. Right. Um, and and uh, changing the narrative around that, I think, would would uh, help a lot. But, you know, the last thing I'll say here, Ben, we live in a country where it is illegal to remove a kitten 
or a puppy from from its mother <laughs> mm. before what six or eight weeks but wow. we are asking women to give birth and there is no protection that says that a, a mother wow. can just leave her child and when you look at the laws of most states there are not daycares that accept children under two weeks old so That's at right. a very, very bare minimum, there should be a two week mandate after you have a child. And even if it's unpaid, that you should not lose your job because you can't there's nowhere for you to even put your child uh, before they hit two weeks old. Let alone the fact that a doctor says you need six, six weeks minimum to recover. And that time increases if you have any complications or a C-section. That's right. That's right. It's uh, Georgia. It's, it's, it's astonishing. And the, and the thing about it is, is I have come to the conclusion that it's not because our political leaders don't understand this. They fancy themselves to be smart, smart enough to run for office. They understand what's going on. I, Republicans and Democrats. It is the it's the feigning of helplessness from the Democrats that we're not going to tolerate. If they're going to sit here and pretend as if there's nothing that they can do to get Joe Manchin, Kirsten Sinema and, and get some Republicans in check. Then we're going to let them know that they are incapable of representing us because we don't have time for us to sit around. See, George, I, I know you're tired of it. I know all of us are tired of it. We are tired of trying to explain to people who already know and they don't want to know because they don't want to help us. And that is the only conclusion I can come to at this point, because I've been studying this a long time. You've been following this. You've been living this a long time. They know parents need to be able to go home with their with their kids. They just don't care. They need us to come out and make them their quarterly profit margins. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Well, I know that uh, there are some youth even who are fed up uh, there. There have been about a, a dozen youth who have committed themselves to fighting against climate justice uh, in in D.C., uh, demanding that Biden uh, take these issues um, and, and do something about them. And I, I want you guys to hear uh, from these young people who now I believe are on day nine of not eating anything, trying to build awareness and get Biden to buy in on the urgency of the need for climate justice. Take a listen. Hey. lying down or sitting and we have to take our vitals like around three times a day um, if our blood pressure or heart rate drops too much it means we have to go to the ER um, yeah hang in there you can support us with the link in my bio and I'm here doing this hunger strike because I would do anything for that future to be real I have a president said that that was going to happen, who said that the U.S. government was going to make it possible for me to live my life, for my generation to live. He promised me and my, and my generation, he promised the American people in every country on earth that he was going to cut fossil fuel emissions by 50% by 2030 to avoid the very worst of the climate crisis. I believe that he will do that. I believe that he will do everything in his power to make sure that happens before he goes to the world stage this Sunday. I keep hearing these stories about about Joe Biden and the Democrats that they, they can't do that. That they that they're gonna let they're gonna let burn and drown and starve in the climate crisis because Joe Manchin they like can't stand up to Joe Manchin. The senator from Exxon has taken four million dollars from the fossil fuel sector. I ran into Joe Manchin yesterday, coming out of a meeting with his corporate donors. I thanked him. I know what it was. He's like lying to me and then getting in his car and driving away while I screamed that I wanted to live. And I'm here because I am desperate and I am furious. Wow. Then these young people are putting their life on the line. Yeah. Yeah. No, I was looking at that and I'm looking at them as they were standing next to, uh, I believe it was Pastor William Barber. Um, and 
And I had to ask, I'm like, are these young people? Because they're in wheelchairs, they look emaciated, they're they are putting their physical bodies on the line because it's that serious. We're at that juncture, not only in regards to like the pit- pitiful politics of our politicians, but also in terms of the environment, the Sunrise Movement. Um, s- shout out to them in solidarity. Um, and I, I really hope, I really hope that the nation can see these young people sacrificing their bodies to get something actually done. Well, and you know, this... It makes me think about what's happening to um, this attorney who has been uh, fighting on this issue uh, just recently this week. He was um, sent to prison and Mm, he was sent to prison uh, because he filed a lawsuit against Chevron and won. And then here That's comes right. Chevron uh, and, and they have launched this campaign against him. And um, they have been Chevron has been extremely uh, successful in launching this campaign against him to the point where they have gotten him disbarred. And so as an attorney who uh, filed this lawsuit against Chevron because of uh, the waste that they were putting into uh, the Amazon, uh, just, mm-hmm. you know, all of these different um, environmental issues that they were causing as a corporation. Right. And and he put their feet to the fire and he held them accountable and they came back with their money. And um, I, I'll let you guys take a look. This is the latest from uh, Democracy Now. Uh, they did a really great breakdown on this, but it just Ben, it shows the people who stand up against this system, especially the environment, which I, I feel like People aren't always paying attention to uh, this fight, uh, but there is a system that will resist and, and will press back. Take That's a right. look at this. What's been described as the Amazon's Chernobyl. 1,700 square miles of land in the Ecuadorian Amazon, devastated by decades of reckless oil drilling. Ten years ago, Ecuador's Supreme Court ordered Chevron to pay $18 billion for dumping over 70 billion liters of oil and toxic waste into the Amazon. The ruling came in a lawsuit brought on behalf of 30,000 Amazonian indigenous people who'd been suffering since the mid-60s, when Texaco began drilling on their ancestral land. Chevron bought Texaco in 2000. The landmark ruling was seen as a major victory for the environment and corporate accountability. But Chevron refused to pay or clean up the land. Instead of cleaning up the Ecuador and Amazon, Chevron has spent the past decade waging an unprecedented legal battle to avoid paying for the environmental damage, while also trying to take down the environmental lawyer Stephen Donziger, who helped bring the landmark case. With the help of dozens of law firms, Chevron has ended Donziger legal career. He's been disbarred. His bank accounts have been frozen. He's been forced to surrender his passport. Steve Donziger has also been under house arrest for nearly 600 days after a federal judge drafted a criminal complaint charges against him for refusing to turn over his cell phone and computer. In an unusual legal twist, the judge appointed a private law firm with ties to Chevron to prosecute Donziger after federal prosecutors declined to bring charges. His case is attracting growing attention with the legal world, as well as among environmentalists and human rights activists. What's at stake is the ability to advocate for human rights in our society. I mean, the, the, the things I was charged with were I was a lawyer litigating various court orders um, you know, for years, this judge just went after me. I'm the only lawyer ever in U.S. history to be charged with criminal contempt of court for challenging a civil discovery order on appeal. That's essentially what happened. Wow. Ben, what do you, what do you say about that? I say that I say that we have a hell of a fight against us. Um, solidarity with Attorney Dozinger. Um and what he's going through. I saw a tweet that he sent out yesterday as he uh, turned himself over to authorities to carry out his sentence. I believe it's a six month sentence. And the tweet showed him hugging his son, his teenaged son, um, broke me into a million pieces because while I can understand, well, no, I actually, let me start that last sentence again. I also understand um, that uh, Brother Stephen is a soldier and he's out here fighting a good fight and he's fighting it against a behemoth like the the environmental lobby and and the these oil companies, they literally have enough money 
and enough power to get a judge to appoint a private law firm with ties to their company so that they can execute a grudge against a man who stood up against their environmental waste and destruction. That lets me know that we have a hell of a fight on our hands, Georgia, as we try to protect this planet from sociopaths. Yeah, no, I I couldn't have said it better myself. I know we are on the clock. So what is it that people can look forward to in the next hour? Yeah, coming up um, in the next hour, uh, we have several interviews coming up. The Amazon, Amazon Amazon.com. We are still facing the fact that these Amazon drivers are having to urinate in bottles to get their packages to you. We're going to be discussing that um, with one of our interviews coming up at the 830 hour. We're also going to be reaching out. um, That first interview is Brother Maurice Weeks. He's going to be coming in to discuss Amazon. Then after that, we're going to be reaching out into the community. We want to, in part of our show, Georgia, is to connect with all the local communities that are doing good things for their people. We'll be speaking with my wife, Jada Dixon, who's going to be helping us uh, on the community outreach tip. And we're even bringing in our pastor uh, for the first time on our show to discuss what we're doing in our community to help black people during this pandemic. It's exciting. And we'll be talking about it at 830. Can't wait. Stick around for that and more on The Benjamin Dixon Show. James Brother Williams, DJ Exclusive, is in the building. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Get your coffee, get your tea, your drinks, your beverage, whatever it is you need. Get your morning started, y'all. I'm Stacey Pink. We've got a great time to make the business of Texas. So, good morning, everybody. The Benjamin Dixon Show is only possible with listener support. Go to www.patreon.com forward slash the BPD show. It is Thursday, October 28th, 2021. I'm joined by my brother from another mother, DJ Exclusive. How you doing, man? I'm good, sir. How you doing this morning? I'm doing good. I'm still behind this picture because we're on the road. And and man, I got some bad news. Now, we got a whole lot of interviews to get to. I'm going to get right to them. But I came back from... Ja- you saw the picture I sent you. You know I picked up that sauce from Bethune Grill, right? The, the oh, champ yeah. sauce. Uh, I left yeah. it in Jacksonville. So I'm going to go back to Jacksonville and I'm going to get your sauce, man. Because this sauce, let me tell you, it was worth the trip. <laughs> James, you look at my hair behind my ear. Like, oh yeah, y'all hope you see me on screen, Benjamin. <laughs> I see you on screen, man. You didn't got called James, the full got- name, of name. Benjamin. Benjamin. You, you gonna do my myself. whole government name? But listen, no, uh, uh, yeah, man. So I, I just needed to tell you that because I, I know I'm gonna see you later on, and I don't want you to be looking for that uh, uh, sauce and then run up on me because the sauce is worth that. But uh, I digress. Listen, man, we got a whole lot of interviews, um, and I want to start this morning with brother, uh, with a brother from who's been covering some issues that I think are very important for us to discuss, Brother Maurice uh, Weeks. Uh, he's co-executive director of um, the Action Center on Race and the Economy. Uh, and I want to bring him onto the screen now uh, to discuss our continuing focus on Amazon following the urine bottle campaign. We caught video of several Amazon employees having to urinate inside of their trucks in order to get their deliveries on time. Brother Maurice, thank you so much for joining us. How are you? Yeah, I'm doing great, man. I know you have uh, your young child with you and you just heard my three year old. My kids are right here next to me. So <laughs> you're in good company. Feel free to let your kids run free. That's it. Right. Brother, <laughs> tell us about your work, what you're focused on and how it intersects with what we're going on. Uh, our ongoing coverage, rather, of Amazon. Sure. Yeah. So uh, Acre, the Action Center on Race and the Economy. You know, we focus on uh, just that things that are at the intersection of uh, race, racial justice, racism uh, and systemic things in our economy that, uh, uh, you know, specifically extract from black people, uh, you know, uh, other people of color. Um, That is really quickly led us to focus on Amazon, which is, you know, 
uh, obviously one of the largest corporations in the world. And as some of your coverage in the past has shown, um, really mistreats their folks, especially the folks who are towards the bottom of the company, the folks that uh, individuals might interact with the most, their delivery drivers, the folks in warehouses, et cetera. Um, mm -hmm. We're a part of this coalition called Athena, which is, you know, designed to take it on in particular, um, lots of other organizations and um, coming at it from, from lots of different perspectives. Uh, uh, yeah, so that's, mm -hmm. that's kind of where we're coming at, coming at the work. And that's where we connected with you. Um, I'm, uh, I've connected and worked with colleagues with Raphael uh, Shimanov, uh, comms director for Athena. Uh, and that is the coalition that you're talking about. It's made up of 50 grassroots organizations with over 1 million frontline members pressuring for regulation of Amazon and big tech in general. Um, in recent developments, Color of Change has joined the effort. Um, and now the effort is coalescing around reininbigtech.org. Um, tell us about... Tell us about the push and what we should expect as individual consumers of technology from this push to protect us from big tech. Yeah, yeah. No, I think a lot of people interact with with Amazon and, uh, you know, they they look at it as, as, as just another place to, to buy goods. In fact, you know, over half of the goods that people buy online are from from Amazon. So that's normally how people interact with it. What they don't realize is that that's just one part of their business. Um, we can get into the ways in which that part too is 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 relatively insidious. Um, but Amazon, you know, the 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 way that I'm talking to you right now through uh, through the Zoom app, the way that we're streaming, um, you know, our city's budgets, uh, our environment, uh, our the way that our government uh, operates, all of these things are. Um, things that Amazon really directly Im impacts. Um, and, you know, it's not just their hundreds of thousands of, of workers, but it's they, they run the infrastructure of the Internet. Uh, they That's have right. such a vast distribution network that, you know, small decisions that they make about how they operate it have huge environmental impacts. It's just such a behemoth company. You know, you talk about monopoly. They're kind of a monopoly of monopolies. They have so many mm -hmm. different pieces of it that they run um, that, uh, you know, it's it's not just the, you know, I, I, people go on and buy diapers sometimes to get them in two days. That's not just that. It's so, so much more. Um, right. We have to, you know, because they're so large, they are of the opinion that they're too large to be governed. Um, and, you know, that's that's one of the things that we're pushing back against that, you know, we, mm. we no company is too large to be governed by the people. Um, and we have we have to really check them to make sure that we are able to control them. That's right. That's absolutely right. And I'm glad you framed it like that, because it's not just the Amazon. See, the most visible part is is when any anybody who's listening, they could pull up to a gas station where they see all the Amazon Prime trucks and you can see the physical oppression. If you ask them to show you their pee bottles, because that's all I did. That's all I had to right. do. Now, right. the flip side of it is the entire backbone of the Internet is is run by Amazon, Amazon Web Services. I mean, anyone who's done any major type of production on the Internet um, understands that they are one of the key conduits that you have to go through. I want to shift gears to one component that we have a fighting chance of fighting back. Amazon is a monopoly. And like you said, it's a monopoly of monopolies. But it's also a monopoly that's been able to get away without being unionized. And one of the brothers that we've interviewed several times, Christian Smalls, um, had some success this week in making a move towards unionization. Let's take a listen to this clip. Amazon workers give organizing another try. Employees at a cluster of warehouses in Staten Island filed a petition with the National Labor Relations Board's regional office in Brooklyn this week, requesting an election to form a union. Some dressed in costumes resembling the tracksuits worn by characters in the show Money Heist. The effort, called the Amazon Labor Union, is headed up by Chris Smalls, a former Amazon employee who was fired at the start of the COVID-19 pandemic after organizing a protest over the lack of protective gear and hazard pay for warehouse workers. It marks the latest in a series of attempts by Amazon workers across the country to organize in order to demand better working conditions. But it's not just Amazon. A wave of workers from a wide array of companies have taken to picket lines throughout the month, a phenomenon being dubbed Striketober. So far, there have been 184 strikes just this year alone. So 
there's action, Brother Maurice. Talk to us about the different actions, but more specifically, what what do the people need to know from your perspective, from your work, from your research, when we're dealing with Amazon that everybody loves because it's so easy and it's basically a search engine for junk and people love to go in there and just find stuff. What do the people need to understand about the critical nature of this present moment? Yeah, I, I would say the main thing is, you know, the, I'm, I'm seeing clips of, of Amazon's director, Jeff Bezos, on the screen, and, and he pitches him, you know, himself and the company as, you know, this this brilliant entity that is using, uh, you know, uh, uh, technology and computer science to create this uh, infrastructure web that, you know, can get us the things in in two days and you can find every single thing that you're looking for. Um, and I think what some of the recent stories that have come out um, have shown and some of your work has shown is that actually is not, uh, you know, brilliant technology. It relies on Lots of exploitation of workers, right. lots of exploitation of workers of color in particular. Um, there's a story in the New York Times uh, just, you know, this week of uh, they don't even operate their their paid leave system inside of their warehouses correctly. Uh, wow. You know, it has has people, um, you know, marked as as no shows and that they, uh, you know, uh, huh. took six days when they weren't supposed to. So their technology um, isn't even all that. <laughs> their technology, right? Exactly. They can focus on the technology that that can, you know, maybe get Bezos into into lower space. But when it comes to the workers, you know, the main thing that they're focused on is is mistreatment. I think that we're seeing that um, around the country. And you know, there's been some action. Federally, uh, the House Antitrust Committee um, has really taken on on uh, big tech and is, is focused on Amazon and um, has even passed some bills to 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 rein in uh, you know some of their power. But what we need to do is we, you know we're we're just scratching the surface here. You know we we can't have a company. I, I really like getting my goods in two days too, but I'm not willing yeah. to have a company that uh, you know does that and provides this infrastructure. On the backs of workers overheating, workers getting COVID, workers peeing in their in in bottles while they're while they're delivering things, um, mm. you know, it's just unacceptable. So we ha- we have to make sure that we you know we we have uh, some more democracy in in this economy, and and that means really breaking up this this company that's too yeah. big to, to govern themselves. I absolutely love that language, brother, and I'm so glad Brother Raphael connected us together. Could you tell everyone how they can get up with you and support these efforts? Yeah, absolutely. Um, So our coalition, Athena, uh, Athena for All, uh, you can type it into Google, athenaforall.com. You can go to our coalition website, uh, my organization, ACRE, um, the Action Center on Race and the Economy. You can reach us at acrecampaigns.org. Um, and yeah, just, uh, you know, there's, there's many chances to fight this behemoth. So, uh, next, Mm. next chance to get, uh, head to the streets, Mm. head to the streets and also head to a physical store. So long as they have masks and social distancing, uh, get off of that. (laughs) Hey, brother Maurice, thanks so much for joining us. DJ exclusive. Let's go to a quick break. When we come back, I'm going to be speaking with none other than my wife, Jada Dixon. She's going to be our community outreach coordinator for the show. And we're starting right in our own community here in Atlanta. Atlanta, what we're doing here for children during the pandemic on this upcoming quote unquote Halloween weekend. We'll be back with more of the Benjamin Dixon show right after this. All right, y'all make sure y'all stay tuned. Ben is going to be really behave because Jada is coming on. We can't wait to see it. Y'all. Run around and swap out the G-Shock. Moving out of the street. Well, good morning, everybody. Make sure that y'all stay tuned. We got some more interviews coming up next year. Good morning. All we wanted was a hug, yeah. We on the block like every night to catch a buzz. Get the cash and tell my family out of the hood. That's a must. What's up? Good baby. Good morning. 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 Good Jermaine Lewis, good morning. It's somebody else who got this. Liz, 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 Ooh, ooh. Pull up in that rain, 
see me ballin', yeah. 30 feet on my wrist like I'm hardy. Either they love me or I'm a target. Mm-mm. Cause I saw me who's flawless. I've been busy and picking up when you callin'. And on purpose, I hate the fact when you talking. Oh my gosh, everybody. I forgot to tell y'all. Uh, I had the worst night last night, man. Oh my gosh, let me tell you about the night last night. So, the ghost of Gloria Gaynor appeared in my bed, in front of my bed last night. It scared the mess at me. At first, I was afraid, then, I was petrified. Y'all stay tuned. Got more coming up next. Y'all stay tuned. <laughs> I've got Georgia Fort with that one. Alright, so y'all make sure y'all stay tuned, man. We get some more stuff set up in the background. And we'll be back again. Y'all make sure y'all stay tuned. Brother Matisse, what's going on? I don't matter to me. I'll tell you these a little bit. Yeah, what's going on? I just need you by my side. Y'all know y'all like my jokes, man. Y'all shut up. Until the day I die. Ever since you found me. The only thing I see forever and a day is you and me And they can't replicate this unity No pressure I can see I'm watching and they try to do better But you one in a million, you ain't average Girl, I promise I'ma have you living lavish Take a trip, girl, we're about to vanish I'll go anywhere, anywhere Just as long as you with me Cause girl, I know that you get me so I'll go anywhere Dwayne Dwayne I'll go So I'll go anywhere Care about the way they looking at us Cause I know they wish they had it And you know we can damage to the game I don't care about the stereotype I can never do it mono We the stereotype I'm talking left, right, left I, I got left another question though Can like someone please tell me What the lowest rank in the army is? Cause every time I ask someone They tell me it's private I mean I don't know I don't get It was an easy decision I had a marrying Honeymoon I'ma put you on a chariot And they don't make them like you no more <laughs> See you watching and they try to do better But you one in a million, you ain't average Girl, I promise I'ma have you living Baby lavish boy. Take a trip, girl, we're about to vanish I'll go anywhere, anywhere Just as long as you with me Cause girl, I know that you get me So I'll go anywhere Cause I'll go So I'll go anywhere Cause I'll go So I'll go anywhere, so I'll go anywhere. Be the low person say I'm not playing with you this morning. And then I'm gonna tell y'all, I'm gonna tell y'all, I did get it. Right? Um, so I told my cat that I'm gonna teach him English. And then y'all know the cat looked at me and said, How? I'll go anywhere. See, the longer that y'all got me on this screen, the longer I'm gonna tell y'all some dad jokes, man. Y'all make sure y'all stay tuned. I'm just picking. Another song right now. <laughs> I know y'all love me. Y'all do. What would y'all do without me? Probably nothing, but who knows? <laughs> this one is for Ben, brother Ben. This song is for you, brother. I mean, not because it's a folk jam, not just, you know, but it's okay. Baby, you set my soul on fire. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Yo, 
can't get you off my mind. Yeah. I'm running through hot. I need to cool me down. I'm flying so high, I don't see the ground. I got some glasses up there. I'm running through hot. I need to cool me down. I'm flying so high, I don't see the ground. Make sure y'all stay tuned, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get some stuff set up in the background back here. It's like, look, 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 look,
That's how mm. much their bodies are packed on top of each other during a pandemic. So we're going to confront that head on. Rebecca Azor is going to be coming in with Like It or Not, and she's going to be speaking to friend of the show, Olay Olurin, about what's going on at Rikers Island. Also, a couple more announcements. The Halloween party, patron party, tomorrow night? Yes, sir. 8 p.m. <laughs> 8 p.m. We're good to go. 8 p.m. to midnight. We are going to be partying, dress up. Uh, James, did you decide on your costume? Oh, yeah. I got mine already. Oh, you already said, I haven't gotten mine yet, so I'm going to figure something out today because I know if I don't come dressed up tomorrow, the patrons from all across the globe, I'm going to be getting hell from Australia, uh, UK. The UK is going to be clowning me because I'll be the only person not dressed up. So, patreon.com forward slash like You're going to get hell from Atlanta, Georgia from Rebecca and I. <laughs> So what you're saying is I better dress up. All right, all right, I got it, I got it. Oh, yeah. Man, I, I think I'll go get me some white sheets. That's all I need. I'm going to pull the white sheets off of this bed here at this hotel <laughs> and dress up like uh, Joe Manchin, Senator Joe Manchin. If, um, if that's you that, come James. in the studio with a white sheet on, Benjamin, you better put some thought in this costume. You only got one day, so I don't know what you're going to do. <laughs> it, is, it, it is a real it's a real costume. All right, I tell you what, we're still waiting on um, we're still waiting on the technology hurdle for um, for my past. But that said, we have Jada, my wife. Everybody who has watched the show for any amount of time um, knows Jada. Um, what's that, James? Before I move, you're about to say Philip filibuster Ben. Yeah. Oh, filibuster a little longer. Okay, see, this is what happened. I was I was reading Slack and I was listening to David, and that's what I get for listening to a white man. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> it's today Friday. No, today is Thursday. I'm one head. I'm one day ahead of all this. Listen, the reason I'm bringing on my wife. Let me just set it up properly because James. One thing I noticed is um, mm-hmm. there's a disconnect in terms of politicians, in terms yeah. of media, and the community. And what I don't want, the very last thing that I want this show to be is to be one of those shows that is isolated and alienated from the public, from the community. I want us right. to literally be 10 toes deep, man. Um, so I, um, that's why we're bringing Jada in to help us to connect with the community. She's, she's a prolific um, um, community um, organizer. She's always in the streets and she's always connected to organizations, um, civic organizations, um, sororities, fraternities, uh, religious institutions, and how they connect to the community to help specifically in this case during the pandemic. So uh, Jada is going to be connecting us with sororities, with the, you know, barbershops, with all the, the black stuff, man. We got to get, we got to <laughs> right. get inserted into the community the way we know how james absolutely i agree man so i can't wait for this to uh come through Mm. yeah (laughs) oh ben you don't hear me no i I don't hear you i'm just i'm just saying mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) you know i'll fake it i'll fake it till i make it either way it goes i know you said something prolific james but i appreciate it (laughs) i didn't (laughs) you didn't you didn't say anything prolific (laughs) I was like, go to a break. Right, and I can't wait. <laughs> We're going to go to a break because this next important co- co- conversation is important. We're going to set it up, and I want to take the time. Technology is a monster. Zoom is, is still 2021. You're on mute in Zoom, sis. Aunt, you're on mute in Zoom. We got to work around those hurdles. James, take a quick break. We filibustered. When we come back, we're going to be talking about community engagement and how we're engaging our children during the pandemic. We'll be back right after this. Man, when I tell you it was some dead air right there, if I was at work, I would have got ding for dead air. So thank you for letting me fail my carpet. <laughs> what you want? Hey man, me. so y'all stay tuned. We get everything together, y'all. So this me. is a short, short break. Don't tell me what it is. Don't tell me what Don't it is. They try to throw saw. They just make the pressure raise. <laughs> Going through a phase. Gotta get myself out it. Don't talk <laughs> about it, boy. They said you gotta be about it. So I be trying no, to face the world. I don't. Front seat I'm riding, slick. cruising That's down the meadows. Pedal to the meadow. Cool breeze blowing down the windows. Calm trees blowing trees. Get that boy some edge from. Forgive me, bro. In the in traffic, but I swear. Swerve. I was watching moves for the night. What's the word now? What's the link? Hit me up. We could go now. I got hella pieces. She got hella features. She me hella geeked up. She be blowing shisha. Free for homie loud. Hope them boys don't creep up. I don't know a thing if you do not speak up. In my own world, I don't try to kill. Tell me what you want. Don't be trying to front like.
like I ain't what you want. I ain't here to stun. Let me take you out for lunch. I'ma get you drunk, yeah, filling all your buns, licks in the blunt. I got ash in my cup, all these girls showing up, but I don't give a fuck. Cause you the one I want, girl. You the one I want. Girl, you the one I want. Hey, hey come and show me love. I wanna be a rider, and I'm feeling high, can't deny it. She a badge on name Maya. And when I seen her, man, she look fire She got me feeling higher than the sour So I'm trying to feel how I feel inside her I asked her what she doing, she like nada So she just chillin' about to get up in the shower I said, all right, cool, I'ma be there in an hour I just wanna live like a Kuna and Matata I ain't got no time for no way Mind is on an island Told my babies I'll be homeless, so don't stay up So don't stay up Breaks my Welcome back, everybody. Again, um, let's jump right into the conversation. I want to bring on the screen my wife, uh, Jada Dixon, and our pastor, Pastor Torin Daly, uh, pastor of Friendship Community Church uh, in Atlanta, Georgia. I like to say Atlanta. I guess they could Google it and figure out exactly where we are, Pastor. That said, um, Jada, <laughs> thank you for joining us. Pastor Daly, thank you for joining us. Tell us about... First, Pastor Daly, I want to begin with you, and, and we're going to get to the event that's coming up this weekend because we're excited about it, um, and we're going to be there. But I want to talk first about all of this organizing in the pandemic. It's been really difficult um, from a church perspective because we've been able to see all the pastors online, and they've been telling us about the difficulty of keeping their membership together and keeping their community, quite frankly, because a lot of the churches don't just serve one particular house. They serve the entire community. How has how have you and the ministry been able to stay rooted with your members through this pandemic um, when so many people have gone back, but your congregation, you all have not gone back yet? Right. Well, you know, we have uh, really tried to be as, as socially responsible as, as possible throughout the course of the pandemic. And, um, you know, it, what I've noticed is it, it kind of varies from region to region. Um, and uh, those uh, congregations that are in uh, areas that are more hard hit or have been hit harder uh, or that are um, led uh, governmentally by persons that maybe are a little bit more uh, socially responsible. What I've noticed is that those congregations tended to be a little bit more conservative in regard to the timeline for going back into worship. And uh, what I'm beginning to see amongst uh, many of my colleagues is that um, uh, late fall, winter um, is the time frame that um, that a number of churches are beginning the, the process of going back in. But one of the ways in which we've been able to stay connected to our uh, uh, parishioners is by way of technology. You know, this has been, we have been living the, the, we have a Commodore's theology, Zoom, Zoom, you know, I mean, it's just been all about <laughs> Zoom over the past, <laughs> over the past 18 years. Yeah. And, um, and so, I mean, that's, that, that's just what we've been able to do. So we, we have our worship experiences that take place on our social media platforms, YouTube, uh, you know, the other one, uh, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, whatever it's yeah. going to be called. I just call it the other one. But we, I mean, we <laughs> have to stay on the other one because a lot of people are on the other one. So, uh, but uh, but yeah, but you can find us. Oh no, you got to go. Yeah. Uh, what you say? What did you, you, you say, Ben? You, you got to You got to You got to go where the people are, and that's one of the things that I appreciated uh, about um, a lot of the churches at the beginning of the pandemic got the picture that they needed to shelter in place. There were a whole, there were a lot of churches of a different persuasion that never shut down, but we did. Um, but now on this side of the pandemic, I've seen a lot of churches, even black churches, um, they're starting to go back, and uh, you know that. That that bothers me because a lot of children haven't gotten the vaccine yet, and there's still a lot of elderly people at a lot of these churches. What what went into your decision and the church's decision to not go back in person while there's so many other churches going back? Well, you, you hit the nail on the head. Um, there's so many children who are unvaccinated, and the combination of that with the Delta variant um, just uh, it, it made it for us. It made it a um, really a no-brainer 
so what happened back in July, prior to the Delta variation or Delta variant becoming predominant, uh, we did a survey and uh, about 40 percent of our parishioners said, hey, go back in January 2022. That was about 40 percent of the congregation. That was prior to the proliferation of the Delta variant. Um, yeah. and, and so, you know, uh, once the Delta variant became the predominant strain and we began to see ICU hospitalizations uh, skyrocket and and then when we began to see the deleterious effect that the Delta strain was having on our children, it made it a no brainer. And so we're in the preparatory stages of, you know, uh, getting ready to come back into in-person indoor worship. But it is only because uh, we see the infection rate uh, going mm. back down and, um, you know, we are awaiting uh, approval from the FDA, uh, emergency approval for, you know, vaccinations for children 5 to 11. And so that will take care of a, uh, a large swath of our communities that are yet unvaccinated. Uh, and and yeah. we're also hopeful that, uh, you know, children uh, from two years of age uh, on up uh, will be able to receive the vaccine shortly thereafter. Yeah. And so with those strategies in place, you know, we'll, we, we feel a little bit more comfortable. And we also know from some of the data that we've seen from congregations that have gone back in from other regions in the country, it's slow. It, it's kind of like the children of God. Uh, leaving uh, Babylon, going back into Judah, it, it will happen in waves. And so uh, there will be a <laughs> you better preach. Bell wave, a Ezra and a Nehemiah wave. And, and so we're, we're preparing. I'm sorry, I, I'm, I'm laughing, Pastor Daly, because I'm like, you, you just you just exegeted a text in like 2.5 seconds for the whole audience. Uh, y'all go grab your Bible so you can understand the third wave of liberation that he's talking about uh i want to bring jada into the conversation because jada uh i actually you, you obviously you know the benjamin dixon show exists because of you but one of the things we're <laughs> focusing on is community engagement we're focusing on making sure that uh, this show is is acclimated and inserted into the various communities namely churches civic organizations um but then specifically coming up this weekend is an event that demonstrates how pastor daily and friendship and other churches can and institutions in general can model safely engaging your community in the pandemic without exposing them to the coronavirus tell us about kids and candy what's coming up this weekend and how you all are safely facilitating this encounter with the public Absolutely. So with Friendship Community Church, um, as Pastor has mentioned um, in speaking, that we are finding innovative ways to engage the church, but on a safe in a safe manner. So this Sunday we're having at 930 lawn chairs and worship experience where everybody can come, bring your family, bring your friends, bring your community members, your lawn chairs, enjoy a great, great worship experience. Uh, Pastor Daly never uh, delivers um, a bad word. Everything is always <laughs> on point and on time. You're not going to be disappointed. Right. Um, immediately following that uh, worship experience, we are continuing with that innovation and providing an alternative, what we like to call the fall celebration. And so through that fall celebration, what we're going to do is a kids and candy drive-by. So that would allow families as well as the kids to safely um, participate in games, uh, have some popcorn, have some cotton candy, as well as pick up their treats. Um, as safe as possible. There's, you know, that's like the ultimate meaning of social distancing. Everybody will be in their own cars moving forward, moving around the church. Um, and then they'll also get an opportunity to meet some of the ministries that are geared towards our children and youth, such as our children's ministry, our youth ministry. Um, we also have a grandparents ministry. So we're doing innovative ways, innovative things at Friendship Community Church to make sure during this pandemic, we are engaging and involving the involving the community um and so you know and that and that's with pastor david's leadership and the church office and the church administration that we're able to do those things and we want to continue those things and hopefully motivate those in the community to do the same to think of other alternatives that that are possible 
Mm, yeah. Pastor Daly, I know you have to get out of here. Uh, I want to ask you this last question. And then uh, if you would tell everyone how they could not only support this upcoming event, but support um, further outreach like this from friendship. Uh, but could you could you just help us? One of the things that we focus on in the show a lot is getting people vaccinated. One of the issues that I have found quite often is that there is a religious component to people saying they don't want to get vaccinated. Now, I'm not a I'm not I'm not like Brother Mac, who's on our show, who is a Sunday school dropout. I've actually studied, you know, I'm pretty in depth into the Bible and all that stuff. I just can't find a religious justification for, I mean, in, in terms of just like a wholesale, maybe somebody's particular interpretation, and we'll respect that. That's fine. But I don't see a wholesale statement from the Bible saying that we shouldn't get vaccinated. Could you address just briefly the fears that people have and, and, and how religion is sometimes being used to block people from going to protect themselves from COVID-19? Sure. Um, uh, you know, typically what we do is we misuse uh, religion. And, and I, I, I use that word intentionally. We u- mis- misuse religion. We misuse religious beliefs in order to um, be able to support what we think. So I don't want to get a vaccine. Not me personally, but this is what the person says. I don't want to get a vaccine. So let me find any reason that I can possibly find, real or not real, uh, Mm. that can support my reason for not wanting to do something. It's no different than when uh, one of your kids and one of my kids says, I don't want to do something. They come up with any old excuse. And um, it's it's uh, it's a shame because there are some leaders um, that uh, that lean on this kind of human behavior. Uh, in which people just kind of grasp at anything. I mean, we saw that in the last uh, presidential administration. You know, people say, oh, he's mm. our Cyrus. He's our this. He's our... No, he's not. He's a bad guy. Period. That's right. That's... You know, and so it uh, is nothing biblical. As a matter of fact, I would go so far as to say is, biblically speaking, what Jesus says is, I'm going to boil all of this thing down into something very, very simple. Uh, He was asked, what is the greatest commandment out of 613 do's and do nots? What's the greatest? He said, love God and love people. And on his way to the cross, he simplified it even further. He said, love one another. That's it. And so one of the greatest expressions of love that we can show in regard to our communities is by being socially responsible. And one of the most socially responsible things that we can do in 2021 is to be vaccinated, is to not pass on this virus to others who are more, more vulnerable in our communities. And uh, and so mm, I, I mm, just mm. completely dismiss any religious, theological uh, excuse for not getting vaccinated. There is no biblical, theological, religious support for um, Christian support for not getting vaccinated. I can tell you that for a fact. Hey, y'all better yes, come a little now, closer and listen to this black man. <laughs> 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 Pastor mean, Daly, uh, hey, go ahead. No, it just, it just go ahead. I'm sorry. It just, it just it's, you know, we, we, uh, we, we, we see just how destructive this virus has been yeah. in our communities in particular. And, um, and, and, and I can go further, uh, uh, but uh, it's, it's just, uh, it's a shame. Well, However, it's a shame. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Tell the people how they can get up with, with, with friendship and how they can support the event that's coming up this weekend. Um, and, uh, and Jada, thank you so much for helping coordinate this. Well, listen, your wife, uh, Sister Jada has just been absolutely awesome. Uh, she is our children's and youth ministries administrator. And uh, I'm looking forward to this Sunday. And this is another way in which we have been able to keep the congregation together. It's by coming together safely in a social distant outdoor experience. And so this Sunday, again, 930 yeah. uh, here at 4141 Old Urban Road, put Atlanta, Georgia into your GPS. 4141 Old Urban <laughs> Road, Atlanta, Georgia, 30349 uh, is uh, is the location. And if you are not in the Atlanta area, drive. Just drive That's up right. here. 
You know, I mean, just come on. But no, <laughs> if you can't drive on Sunday, uh, then be sure to check us out on Facebook. Just search for Friendship Community Church um, uh, on Facebook yeah. as well as on YouTube. Again, search for Friendship Community Church 930 each and every Sunday. Pastor Daly, Jada Dixon, thank you all so much. Um, and we will, I won't, I don't know that I'm going to be there Sunday only because now that you've given them the address, I got a lot of internet trolls who will probably like to beat me there. So I'm not going to be there, but I expect everybody else in the area, to, y'all come on out there and it's a safe whole, I mean, it's a great it's socially distanced. And I'm honestly tired of seeing all these churches have all these extra funerals because pastors are just trying to get them back into the sanctuary. So thank you for what you're doing, Pastor Daly. Jada, thank you for what you're doing. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, Ole Oluren is here. We're going to like it or not, and we're going to talk about what's happening at Rikers Island. It is atrocious. We'll be right back after this really quick break. Home, no place like Good morning, everybody. Oh, my God. Look at this hat. Jesus. <laughs> Look at, good morning. And welcome to Like It or Not, where we're free to tell the truth. And not care who doesn't like it. Good morning, Ole. And yes, this is a Rattler's hat. And, and listen, in, in, um, in the back, in the in the background, uh, Dwayne going to talk about, oh, it looks like your hat been through some things. Yes, this hat been through some things. This hat about 12, 13 years old. Okay, I had this hat when I was first on the hill as a little teenager. Yes, yes, it's been through listen, some things. Don't let them stop you. <laughs> uh, uh, sister, first of all, let like, me, let, let's do Ole, how you doing this morning, sister? Good, I'm up, I'm up, I'm here. Good. Listen, thank you so much for your patience. You know, we we've had a, a busy load this morning, and um, and you're a friend of the show. So when we bring you in, we just bring you in. We don't even do like a whole form introduction. We just say, hey, Ole is here, y'all. Ole is here. <laughs> hey y'all. But the but the 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 reason we brought you in today, as much as we like to laugh, oh man, right. um, what's going on at Rikers is so listen is is an, is atrocious. Help yeah. us out. Listen, the last time I was here, I told y'all it was a human rights crisis and we were at 12 deaths. We're at 14 now. So what does that tell us? Right. It's continuing to escalate and get worse. And yet they are not decarcerating. And it just it's honestly, it's just it's abhorrent. Right. Like how many? Ow, Raheem. Because listen, Not between Raheem trying to get on the show, Ole. <laughs> between your cat, Ole, my kids, and our other guest kids, this has been a wild show. How's your cat doing? Listen, I'm saying, I think he thinks if I'm up, I should be feeding him. My man grabbed my toe like this with the, with the, with the, with the strength just now. <laughs> I felt that. Oh my God. Wait, give us a. I need the audio. Wait, we'll get to Rikers because Rikers is there. Put a, put, put, is the cat still there, Ole? Is he, is he still there attacking? He's a terrorist. Put him up the full screen. Full screen. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Girl, why is the, look? They trying to cover. It's his like face your cat up. is in the it's witness protection agency. They don't want. They don't want us to see the cat, cat. child. The, the cat is a minor. They don't not want us to see the cat. <laughs> oh my god! Cat is blurred. My apologies. It's I'm gonna keep my That's toes okay. to okay. All right. So, so your toes were just attacked by your savage cat. No problem. We. we yeah, exactly. It's, it's that kind of day. It is. It's I that have, kind of day. Um. <laughs> but um, but you're a public defender in New York, um, yes. and you know firsthand how Rikers, and not just Rikers, but Rikers seems to be like the epitome of the abuse of this criminal justice system. Tell us about all the stuff that you've been covering, and we have some clips and we have some footage of all the new stuff that's coming out of Rikers, all the bodies piled up on top of each other. Mm-hmm. So listen, so I've been saying since last year and, you know, I'm, I'm actually really glad that the pictures came out because I think people think you're being hyperbolic. I've been saying that yeah. the cells have 40, 50 plus people in it in the middle of a pandemic, that they've been moving COVID people into general pop. I've been ex- describing it exactly like this a year ago, me and every other public defender. And I we have just being ignored so much. But I think I think people have a faith in the criminal system in this way or in their legislators. They believe if something is truly that outrageous, right, it would be being addressed. It would be being treated like it's this human rights crisis that it is. So when we were describing exactly what you're seeing in those photos, just falling on deaf ears. And so I'm glad that people can see now that what we're saying is happening is exactly what's happening. And the people we put in power are not doing anything about it, right? Because it's only been getting worse. It's been like this and getting worse since last year when they rolled back bail reform. They caused pretrial detention to spike like 70%. It's been this case. People have been dying and it's 14. We're now up to 14 deaths this year. And yet judges are still setting bail. They haven't made any real major moves to decarcerate. They're still putting people in there on violations. It's, It's a shame. Mm. Yeah. And it's crazy, Ole, because just like you said, you know, and you who are someone who is front and center of it, it's like um, when we were bringing up the photos on the other day, um, I was saying this isn't this is not anything new because the article that I read that was from 2020, um, uh, August of 2020 was discussing the same exact conditions and yet yeah, nothing right. has been done. There is no change. There's no difference. It is literally the same. And it's so sad because nothing has been done nothing has been done since then and and even with these photos do you think anything is going to change even with these photos coming out no and let me tell you why because at the end of the day right the legislators have seen this this might be new to the public but they know they've seen they've seen they've heard and you know our mayor de blasio originally de blasio didn't go he hadn't been to Rikers since 2017 right and so that's not really a defense to explain why one because that shows how much you care at all right about your mm. citizens about the people incarcerated at Rikers, the fact that you didn't visit but then upon the recent you know humanitarian crisis and people complaining and you know people talking about what's happening in Rikers and him getting criticized for the fact that he never returned he went he visited and other elected officials have visited so they've seen it they've walked the halls they know exactly what's happening there and yet right. de blasio was still up there talking about you know arresting people for riding atvs and bikes and coming up with more foolishness to put to to put people in rikers like it's not already full like let's not forget we're looking at those cells that are full but that's not that's just you're looking at a taste of it there they have people in shower and shower stalls because there are no spaces in cells there there are more bodies than there are space yes isn't that isn't that insane people are being kept in the showers in the, people and, are having and, to sleep. Aren't they still in. running? Aren't they still running it um, in some way, shape, or form? Like some of the people on like a good Tuesday or Thursday because people aren't showing up to work. You have the right. inmates who are already living in poor conditions, r- having to run this system, and they're already having their rights taken away from them, where they don't even have, the, where they can't even make a phone call, talk to a lawyer, you know, get any exactly. time to speak to somebody to free them, and now they're right. running. And then now they're running the jails. <laughs> right. And no let's respect. not forget that on top of all of this, they've been being exploited for labor the entire time, right? As they always are, but especially in this, this pandemic. Originally, they had them making the masks, the sanitizer, the everything that they couldn't use. We couldn't get them COVID That's... testing for the longest. We had to fight to get them testing. We mm. had to fight to get them vaccinated. We had to fight for them to get any like kind of medical Jesus. attention right now. So imagine that on top of a pandemic where you're putting them in worse and worse and worse circumstances. Every time we look, every time a story comes out about Rikers, it's worse, right? The last time I was here, I told you all about a 24-year-old autistic boy that died in Rikers recently, right? Yeah. Now there's a 58-year-old man they just took him off life support in Rikers because he tried to hurt himself. And I said last time that people taking their lives because of conditions that they're left in pre-trial is not a suicide. That is that is a default. Mm. I said it last time and I'm going to say it again. Mm, 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 mm. 
we got a couple of uh, uh we have some clips here Ole. i want us to play so the people can get a better i but the one i did not know they have people bodies piling up in showers to sleep <laughs> that is some ambitious that is some i i, I that's a level of disregard for human life that I guess you would expect at this juncture at Rikers. Um, I want to play this first clip, um, and it is uh, the images of Rikers Island over the audio of New York State Senator J Jessica Ramos. She's the chair of the New York City, uh, New York Senate Committee on Labor, and she is speaking on what she saw during her visit to Rikers, even though de Blasio didn't go, he said, since 2017. My God. Right. Let's watch this clip real quick. My name is Jessica Ramos. I represent the 13th district uh, in the New York State Senate. Uh, there's reports of chronic staff absenteeism, incarcerated individuals languishing in intake, self-harm, and more. Um, what we witnessed was really uh, nothing we could have possibly prepared ourselves for. Um, there were about a dozen uh, men that we saw packed into small cells with no beds. Uh, they're being deprived of food, water, uh, showers, and medical attention. I met one transgender woman who had been misgendered and assigned to male housing and abused. Another individual with HIV hadn't received his medicine in over a week and was housed with other men who've contracted COVID-19. A few diabetics had not had their sugar checked in many days, and a handful of men I met had been unable to access the methadone clinic. I met a man who admitted he began cutting himself just so that he had open wounds that would get him to medics and maybe he'd actually be given the medicine to treat his mental illness. I met another man who told me that he suffers from schizophrenia and bipolar disorder, but had not received medication in weeks. I even witnessed a man try to take his own life before our very eyes. Luckily, it didn't work. The violations of human rights taking place in, Rik in Rikers Island are rampant. The population on Rikers is largely comprised of people who have not been convicted of crimes they've been accused of. We're talking about people who are too, post too poor to post bail, which is why we're asking for cash bail to be eliminated. I chair the Labor Committee. Um, I did want to speak up for the correction officers who, de who deserve to work in under safe conditions. I want to pitch, of course, my own bills, both the treatment, not jails bill, and I, I carry the bill in order to do with away with triple shifts. We have to refuse to be complicit in the system, each and every one of us. We cannot shame on us for perpetuating this violence because it's cyclical. Mm. And we can't continue pretend to pretend that anyone in this present prison industrial complex is being rehabilitated or being corrected by any mm -hmm. means. Mm. Mm -hmm. I think that's a big point right there. They have the idea that so. You weren't here when I was discussing this, right? I posted up, I, I reposted your photo, Ole, in my stories. And <clears throat> a friend of mine, a friend, whatever, um, a friend of mine said, you know, in, in the, um, uh, uh, regarding the, the, the video or the photo of them piled up on the ground, replied back to my story and said, hey, you know, maybe if they're not doing any, um, Maybe if they're not, if they stop doing crime. I, Ugh. listen, girl, listen, I could That's so stupid. It was <laughs> so just stupid. Ignorant. It's, stupid. Yes. It's, and that's what I said. You're ignorant for that. And then I, you know, I listed all the things that, you know, the petty things that they could be in there for and how they are, the, the conditions and how they're not given their rights and how they're running. They're running the jail, right? Uh, and, and, and the idea that um, you've done a crime. So you deserve to be in these type of conditions, possibly die because these, these conditions are inhumane. And also um, it, the idea that this, this is going to rehabilitate somebody who happened to, you know, be late on a damn ticket or some, something. It's ridiculous. It's so hmm. stupid. Listen. It's so Listen. dumb. Hmm. People, people need to stop endorsing a criminal system that does not protect them, right? Like, it does not help you none to endorse the world that you're talking about. None of these people have been convicted of a crime, right? So that's first and foremost, right? What you're advocating for is a system where we allow people to have, like, we risk their lives based on accusations. That's what we're saying. So forget the presumption of innocence. Forget any of that. We're saying that if you are accused of a crime in this country, it is acceptable for us to lock you up and, and risk your life in the midst, amidst a pandemic, right? That's what, that's what they want me to believe. Is that what I'm saying? supposed to understand right that's mm. okay um mm. no it's absolutely absolutely ridiculous it's heinous and i can't understand why <sighs> why people can't recognize 
that this doesn't do any good for anybody, right? Let, let, let's pretend, right. let's, let's humor That's this right. idea that, you know, this is what we need for the criminal system, right? If we say these yeah. people are just committing crime, let's say they have no, let's say it's not out of poverty. Let's say it's not because they have a reason. Let's say there are no reason, no justification. They simply are lawless and they don't care about, about the society. So now when you That's lock right. them up, right, and you subject them to every kind of humanitarian abuse, what, 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 what was described there in that audio we just listened is basically people having their lives put at risk, right? A lot of those people that were listed, that's that's a possible death sentence, right? So let's say mm -hmm. they're all lawless people. They don't care. They don't respect the government. They don't respect the law. They don't respect our society, right? So we have them there. We subject them to this. This is how the government treats them. What exactly do we think they would do, right? When they, when they turn mm -hmm. around, we think they're going to be like, oh, yes, yes, I've got it now. I've got it now. Mm -hmm. that, 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 mm -hmm. that government, that society that I already feel like didn't have my back, they definitely got it now. When they left me locked up in a pandemic, really subjected me to every level of humanitarian abuse, I'm going to go out now. I'm going to be a good, good good citizen. All those problems I have right. before, they're gone now. <laughs> they don't work is like that what that. we think? Is that what we think? Like, I'm just like, what world do you think this is? People can't, like, you're not actually locking these people up and throwing away the key, you know? They're not disappearing. They don't evaporate. Right. They got to come back to the same society. Yeah. So all these That's people right. that you say are so That's bad, right. they don't belong here. Let's go lock them up and let's leave them there and let's let them languish away until they get a trial or whatever. So when they come back, what now? What now? Your see, problems see, fixed? Oh. Are your problems fixed? Are they better now or are they going to go back into the community? <laughs> <laughs> All Girl, right, Olay. You tired of these folks. You, Olay is tired. No, she's she tired of this. She gave us a strong Bahamian. She gave us a strong Bahamian with a little bit of Nigerian in there. It was very strong. Like, what? What is it? Okay. She said, what you're not going to do? I'm so she tired. She said, this is so stupid. Day. So <laughs> yeah. see, Olay, I got to ask you. Let me ask you a specific question about what I hear, heard uh, the state senator say. Um, and I think we already know this, but I think we got to point it out. These people have not been convicted of anything and they're only there because they cannot afford to pay their cash bail. How exactly. is this acceptable in the country? How can we claim to be a country of due process when we got our boys stretched out in the showers because they can't afford to pay cash bail? Exactly. Stretched out in the and showers, I, Jesus. Exactly. I need people to pick which criminal system they endorse. I need them to figure it out, mm. right? Because you need to stop picking mm. and choosing, right? Because, oh, you're all for you're all for the carceral system and incarceration and all that. What, what happened to the presumption of innocence? What happened to due process? That's what happened right. to trial? What happened to any of those things? You don't believe in that? Oh, so you only believe in abuse. You only believe in punitive measures. Is that what it is? Is that what I'm to understand? It, it is absolutely, absolutely nonsense. I can't even continue engaging them in good faith. But it's day to day. Mm. It makes mm. me think of this. I have whenever I have a white client, my white clients always call me this every day. And they say, so people can just lie on me and I can get arrested? Like every day they're, they're blown away by this injustice. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, that's exactly. kind of how it works. <laughs> Yeah, I'm like, come with me. You see, that's a problem, right? People just saying stuff and now you in jail. That's an issue. Let's mm. not endorse that system, right? Because it's mm. all fun and games until you realize it could be you. The only reason people have this attitude is because in their minds, it doesn't apply to them. They think that people who are in Rikers or people that end up in jail or people who end up in the criminal system are these like mythical fairy bad people that live on the outskirts of society. That's your neighbor. That's your cousin. That's your friend. Right. That could be you. You know what I mean? Yes. You make the wrong yes. move one day. You decide to have an attitude. You cut up with the wrong person. Somebody decided to call the police. Now you're right there. Now all of a sudden you want people like me to be Rebecca. advocating for your rights. I need people to yep. stop switching up. <laughs> Do you see, Rebecca, why I was so paranoid on the beach in Jacksonville with that white cop? Nah, man, I'm paranoid for a reason. And I just can't believe these kids. And let me ask you a specific question. If, if theoretically we had enough cash to bail everybody out of Rikers, what would stop us? Like, or is the system just so cruel to us that even if we come up with the money, we can't get those boys and those people out? They, I think we could get a lot of people out. There are people, obviously, they're going to be remanded, right? Remanded without custody that they don't even give the option to get out, right? And I think that that's an important thing no one discusses enough. I feel like whenever you see, like, white supremacists in the news and they get bail and the conversation becomes all around, like, you know, Oh, you know, we want them to be able to get bail. And yeah, okay, cool, because I do want a system mm -hmm. where my clients can get bail. But what about the world in which a lot of my clients don't even have the option of bail? Like, we're forgetting that. Like, the, you see things like Rittenhouse, right? Do you think if that was a black person who did that, they would have gotten a bail option or would they have been remanded mm -hmm. in custody? Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. 
you know. <laughs> Speaking of Rittenhouse, Jesus, we have um uh, that that case is a big cluster uh, f going Trash. on in real time. We have a clip here of a judge uh, saying that Rittenhouse, the people that Kyle Rittenhouse, that young white white supremacist, white so called supremacist, um, right. the people that he killed <clears throat> cannot be called victims, but the people that he killed during the trial. We're going to play the clip Can during the trial. Him? They can be called arsonists, looters, and rioters, but the people that this white boy man killed cannot be called victims. Let's look at let's take a look at that clip. The word victim is a loaded, loaded word. And I think alleged victim is a cousin to it. Let the evidence show what the evidence shows, and if the evidence shows that any or more than one of these people were engaged in, in arson rioting or looting then i'm not going to tell the defense they can't call them that okay early star co-anchor and attorney and legal reporter laura jarrett joins us now let me just make crystal clear what happened there in case people didn't get it the judge just said that the people um <laughs> listen yeah, get her out of here she's cute though she's cute but um not as cute as la i'm just kidding but um Hello, listen when, <laughs> See, look, when it even- comes to Hold on, my bad, my bad, Rebecca. This is my Friday. But even CNN messes up and be having the wrong people on screen. So, like, that was a situation where Ben would have been talking, but you was on screen. That's what just happened on CNN. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> that's what I, was, I was like, this is weird. Why am I looking at her and hearing a man's voice? That said, Olay, but yeah. why is... Go ahead, Rebecca. You know the question to ask. Yeah, because I was talking before Dwayne cut me off, and then you took me again. Um, well, hold on. Well, I, I tossed it back to you god <laughs> you can't get nothing around black people go rebecca no, no honestly um i i think that uh this shows the same system that you're talking about Olay. um everything is pretty much systemic everything is pretty much racist everything is pretty much lined up to benefit white supremacists uh and 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 um i think when we see this in the fact that the system blatantly allows right this mm-hmm. to happen to say the people and we know when we hear about like school shootings and mass shootings because we can call this a mass shooting right that happened yeah. Yeah. um and when we hear about that the, what, what we label those things and what we just started labeling those things for people who are americans are domestic terrorists right we we can right. label them terrorist right uh but now here what we're they're telling us to do is um not look at those people that um rittenhouse killed uh because they were protesting in the name of who right or was it george right. floyd they were out there this was during yeah. the whole damn right. pandemic and they were out there risking right. their own lives and this mm-hmm. little white boy took to the streets to go kill people to, to literally go do that and then was treated amazingly after walked over yeah. to the police car oh, you know talked to and coddled and everything like that <laughs> and here now they're telling us to look at the victims as no face no case like they, those people were nothing they were just black people who were out there um looting uh and and doing doing crime so they should do the time right. now they, they're not even alive to tell their stories so right. you know i would say this is very systemic the same way that you say ole and um i don't what could uh, um what could be said that would be different in this moment from um any represent any representative when it comes to this case right well, let me give you all all my thoughts on this, right? Um, because this is a this is all you know public defender Twitter or whatever has been discussing for like the last two days, right? Let me give you all the thoughts. So typically, it is a standard defense motion, right? Defense attorneys always make the motion that you don't call them victims because it's prejudicial. It's always denied, right? The only time Mm. I've ever seen it granted was in mock trial in law school. Every other defense attorney, even the ones arguing that we shouldn't be criticizing that this happened because we want this to happen for our black clients, admit that they never see it happen for their black clients, which is the point. Right. If I say that the system is racist, if I say that the system maintains and upholds white supremacy, this is an example of it doing that. Right. I can't be like, oh, I'm not upset they did this because I wish they would do it for my black clients. They don't and they won't. Because the system is built to maintain and uphold white supremacy. So that is the point in, in illustrating it. So, yeah, you're absolutely, you're absolutely correct. It wouldn't happen otherwise. The judge, this isn't his defense, but this, you know, for clarifying points. So he says that they can't say victim throughout the trial, like at the beginning, because what he's basically trying to say is 
it's too prejudicial. It's something for them to argue. And, you know, if they've they've made that case by their time, they make their closing statement, they can call them um, victims. Now, I do think that's underscored by the fact that, you know, he says you can call them rioters, looters and all these different things that are actually crimes that these dead people have not been convicted of. Right. So let's just keep it G real. What's happening here is this is a white supremacist who did something in the name of white supremacy. So they're going to treat him mm-hmm. like that and give him that benefit because they're fine with it. That's what it ultimately is. And me personally, I want to say this because I think there's been some confusion online. I'm a public defender and I'm an abolitionist, but I don't do nothing for white supremacists. All right. I don't defend them. I don't advocate for them. I don't, I don't so mitigate that. nothing they did. Not in or out of court. Right. I believe you're entitled to all your constitutional rights and you will have them. Because let me tell you something. If there's one place a white supremacist is safe, it's a criminal courtroom. He has he has his mm, lawyer. His rights will be defended. He will be afforded benefits and my clients won't be. So he do not need me and my advocacy. So I said what I said. Yeah. It's outrageous. And I feel all your. Yes. Yeah. And you so uh, I love it. One. And so, you know, um, Ben wanted to clarify um, for me uh, that the people that were murdered in this particular um, oh, case were two white people. Yeah. And and and, yeah. and Anthony Huber and Joseph Rosenbaum. Um, so say yeah. their names. But because they were fighting, right, they were in some way an abolitionist as well for, for yeah. Yeah. black people. They were fighting George for Floyd, us. Yeah. They were allies. So they are going to, they do not want to say their names. Well, you remember when that white woman walked up to the um, state capitol and um, mm-hmm. she was shot and they wanted us to remember her name she was the victim no. although she was What's up there committing the crime What's her name again What's her name I don't again? know no, I'm <laughs> I'm Don't, don't get me started It Ab- was it Ab- Abigail Abby? Oh, what, Abigail? Abigail. Was it Abigail? I did not care. And, and I'm not trying to laugh. Agatha. Agatha. But we, I did but not it was care. Agatha. I do. Never lay such time. We do not care. I do not care. <laughs> we going to hell. For, when you're fighting for don't. white people. <laughs> I don't care. She, she, had all of, she had a whole crew with her. She rolled up in a whole crew. squad. Let them care. Let them care. You don't need Listen. me. You don't need me to do something. <laughs> like, what? what you oh, okay. I'm about? sorry. I'm when sorry. When you're Let's fighting be... for white rights, though, when you're fighting for I'll white rights. I'll tell you rights, why. Let me, t- let, me just, means... let me just articulate this from an intellectual perspective. Why? Just so just so it's not outrageous. Let me tell you why I don't personally care. I'm going to tell, tell you this. Because, first of all, couldn't know group of black people. I think when you make a conscious decision that you're going to go storm, you're going to go storm the Capitol. What exactly is it that you that you think if I were black, what I would anticipate every other black person mm-hmm. would have anticipated us all being gone. If the if the equivalent of black masses went and did the same thing, it would be way more than one white person. One of us that's gone. That's right. right. So, like, you know, and ultimately, quite frankly, I don't have any sympathy to offer to white supremacists, period. You know why? Because a white supremacist mm-hmm. doesn't care about my humanity. They don't care about me living. Mm-hmm. But they certainly don't care about me in death. And that being said, you know, I don't mm-hmm. root for nobody's demise. That's unfortunate that that happened. However, she has community. Yeah. She'll be okay. Yeah, I, she's, she's, dead. She's, dead. I mean. she's dead. She's dead. She's 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 gone. 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 She's gone.
No, you're right on point with that one. We would have been seeing uh, their uh, uh, mug shots. We would have seen them uh, uh, looking in a, uh, any picture of them in a compromising position. Uh, they would have been a uh, uh, black man, right? Black man right. killed. They wouldn't have even have uh, had their names respected. So you're so right. And that's mm. the system that we have. And that is yeah. why. And, and I know that we like to say the system is broken, but, you know, uh, it's, it's designed to work exactly as yes. it's been working. And yeah. that's under this and white that's what supremacy it is. kind of idea. Um, and, and that's what that that's why I even with Kyle Rittenhouse, it that man, that little that little man, that little man, that man mm-hmm. is a terrorist. Because mm-hmm. if it was a black 17-year-old boy, it would be it, it, it would be a man, man already. Even if it was a 12-year-old right. mm-hmm. boy, it would be a man. Right. So the uh, right. Kyle Rittenhouse is a man that did this crime. And uh he's yeah. a murderer, he's a terrorist. <laughs> um and yeah, but I hate that because victims. it has to do with yeah. um with us that we have to look away. And this damn judge, you can tell this judge comes from you can tell he is drenched in racism, white supremacy. Mm. <laughs> and these are the people that are leading and, and, and are over our lives when it comes to us doing anything. They're the ones that can tell us if we can live or die. Yeah. These people. And the reason why. Yep. Mm. And, and it was funny. The reason why they don't show us like I have not seen like the media really show us the two people that Rittenhouse killed since it happened. And you know why it is? Yeah. Because they don't want they don't want white people to remember that. Right. Like as they frame this ah. as like, you know, this white supremacist and who the victims are, they're not plugged in. Right. All the white people you assume that this is they killed somebody black. They two people were killed at a Black Lives uh, uh, Matter protest. Right. So mm-hmm. if you don't mention it, white people don't have that same, you know what I mean? Energy for it. If they were showing these white victims, white people, even even the ones that, you know, don't typically be on our side of the fence might feel some type of way. They would get more people being like, mm, because you didn't just murder two black people. You, you murdered two of their own. So they're not going to show mm-hmm. you. It's the same way whenever they want to dehumanize like, you know, black people that were killed by the police or something. If it's not a national case for attention, they don't show you a picture. They don't show you anything about family or something like that because they don't they they want to make it less real. In this case, what they're doing mm. is here is they rather the narrative just be a white supremacist killed two people at the Black Lives Matter movement. So the people that typically wouldn't care because they're black aren't going to engage for that reason, you know. Yep. And the white people that would feel some type of way because these are white people aren't going to engage either because they don't know because they weren't paying exactly. attention initially because they assume it's a black issue. Mm. Yeah, because uh, honestly, we were, I really uh, thought that they were black as well too until they right. posted mm. the picture a few minutes ago. I didn't even know that they were two white people at all. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. If we have that picture, exactly. uh, Dwayne, bring bring that uh, picture up of the victims when you get a chance. Um, Anthony Huber and Joseph Rosenbaum um, killed by that white domestic terrorist, Dylan. Not D- see, there's another white domestic terrorist, you Dylan see? Roof. Um, yeah, so many names, but yeah, no, I, I didn't think about that, Olay. That that the America doesn't need for the rest of America to see that the victims of white exactly. supremacy also include white people. And Ben, that's a point. And you're spitting, Ben. Exactly. That's it right there. You said it. You said it was good, concise. You got it, Ben. Yeah, I'm just sitting back here. I'm sitting back here just collecting all y'all good ideas and putting them together at the end of the show. That's all. Here you go. LA, we're at the end of the hour. Thank you so much for joining us this amount of time. Rebecca and James, I'm just getting my goodbyes. I'm ready to, to get out of here. But that said, Ole, what is coming up for you? And how should the people <laughs> get up I mean, with you and support like, your work? Ben, <laughs> wait, wait, wait a minute. The ben, no, no. <laughs> wait, 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 wait a minute. It's but, it's Friday, right? It's it's Friday. We ready to go, right? Yes, we understand. Girl, today's not Friday. The, it was girl, just today is right Thursday, now. and I called you, girl. Girl, today is Thursday, <laughs> and the show don't end until ten thirty. So you sit till the happy and find this picture and just be and be still, <laughs> be still. It's the not even seven. What do you mean? We don't know what's happening. I can't see his face to really see what's going on. I'm real confused right now. But it's Olay, the clock. Yeah. It's nine fifty. What do you? Say? It is. It is. I hate y'all. I hate y'all. Olay, what do you have coming up next, girl? <laughs> and she has um, the same question I asked. <laughs> Let me see. I'm gonna be on Law and Crime today at three o'clock. I'm gonna be on Law and Crime again tomorrow. I'm trying to remember. I have a bunch of stuff, really. Um, Girl, because you booked the I, busy sis. You booked right. the busy. You know, a little bit, a little bit. You know, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I have some stuff in the works. I have some articles about the drop. You know, I will. I will make sure I give you all the immediate as soon as everything as everything's out. But I have a couple of podcasts, a couple of shows, uh, a couple of articles mm-hmm. coming out. Um, so I'm gonna give y'all. I'm gonna give y'all. Y'all know y'all get first dibs. 
tell you. Okay, because that's what. Right. Listen, we we don't because we just see everything growing and we're like, look at her. It's like look, oh. I live for it. I love it. And then I meant to tell you. So I know that I said to go with the straight weave, but the the blonde the blonde hair is giving everything in these. Thank you. Kids. Thank you. I, I my like mama hates it. Dreads. I like it. And also, Thank look, because I wanted to add, like, it's a girlfriend moment. So uh, I, I met someone the other day, and he's from the Bahamas. And I would say, Ooh. look, Reese, I, I was like, I got a friend. She from well, the Bahamas. Tell too. me when we get off here, what's his name? Because I'm sure I feel like I know him. <laughs> like, you, you probably do. <laughs> His family, you probably do. His, his family is Haitian and he plays balls. He plays ball overseas. So um, you probably, probably do. Know. I don't know. I probably, <laughs> which, island, which island is he from? He Nassau? said about Abaco. Oh, he from Abaco. OK, I might not know him because he's a family island, but I bet I know his people. But I bet I know his yeah, people. You probably do. <laughs> you probably do. <laughs> but we'll talk later, girl. See, James. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you all for he having ball. me as always. Yo. Man, he play ball. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, uh, he's so he's like six ball. nine. He's six nine. Right, he's six seven. Right. She know her back. Like, so that's what I heard. <laughs> that's all she had to say. We knew exactly what the qualifications were. Right. Her back is like, he's a ball man. He's a ball player. He's only six. <laughs> <nine."> <laughs> all right, girl. Olay. Hey, sis, we love you. We'll we always appreciate you. Love y'all too. Thank you so much, Olay. Right, Take care, now. Thanks, right. Olay. <laughs> now, Rebecca, do I have permission to end the show? <laughs> Get to the after party. Party. No. After party. We're keeping it live, after bitch. So you are still here party. with us. Uh, the hell? So. Well, we had a whole day to, off yesterday. And Rebecca on her day off. Get Being boxes right though, it. It's real ghetto right now. Once we're able to get, because that is not Olay right now. <laughs> Dwayne is so, wait, where's Olay? You, want me you want me to comment for you? <laughs> Olay said she had to get the hell out of. She had to go to this appointment and save some people from Rikers. Man, that's some serious she was work. Like, she's hey, doing they go there. be in ghetto on like it or not, and she loves it. <laughs> it's okay, she love it. I you got to see her timeline. That's why we <laughs> y'all follow her on Twitter at Miss Oluren, and you'll understand she's in good company here. Oh yeah. Oh uh, man, right. what we got she's for the after party and the, and the patron anything. party tomorrow night? Give them all the announcements, y'all. What we got coming up? So tomorrow. Um, uh oh. Ooh. Dwayne, Dwayne we going to miss you, man. They couldn't hear that. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Oh, I know I didn't hear anything. Uh-uh. Um, uh-uh. Hey, brother hey, Chuck Diesel, on, handle on. yourself, hey, Chuck hey, Diesel. Chuck, Please, Chuck things Diesel. and stuff. Things and stuff got to go. Uh, Re- uh, Rebecca, no. I'm I'm trying to. Oh, no, are we having a housekeeping issue? Trying to keep it keep it classy, so we still got a show on Monday. But but uh, things and stuff. Go ahead, things step, and stuff. Step on out, brother. <laughs> yeah, remove oh, yourself before we remove you for you, brother. You, you don't want this smoke, man. Cause Bubba got turned. Hey, after party, it. Patriot. Hey. <laughs> this is the after party. It's public today. Shit. Oh, <laughs> it's a bu- it's a bully in there. Who's bullying me? <laughs> yeah, Bubba, Bubba, give us a transition so we can switch some stuff up here. Okay. Yeah, yeah let's 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 cut yeah. Things and stuff. Let's so bring him to the after party. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah, but send them, no, uh, don't bring him to that party. Cause you got the wrong girl, my my dude. <laughs> Thank you, brother Chuck. We appreciate you. Whoever slayed that effing troll right there, man. You better hey back up. We don't do that kind of talk in this chat room. Not to what my sister. Got your light. I keep animals in the house apparently. Cause sad news, I had a parrot and it was fat. So my fat parrot died yesterday. Mind you, it's a huge weight off my shoulders. Appearance on your soul, oh Jesus. It's gonna be me, cause I always do. So period. There it is. Y'all right, y'all. Let's get back to it, man. Y'all bring one of them. Welcome back to the screen. Being and Rebecca, Dwayne need to go ahead and turn his camera on too, man. We the uh, after party. Yeah, man. we ain't gonna see him for a while. Nah, yeah, man. We need to bring Dwayne in. Camera staying off today. You staying? You staying off today? I need to shave and some most of yeah, nah. No. <laughs> see, we I just got a that. text message. <laughs> I just got a text message from somebody watching saying, Ben, why does your wife have her camera on and you don't? I'm like, well, because not everybody looks uh, oh, good without see, makeup in the morning. Come you on, man. I'm glad I was going to say something, but I didn't, Ben. So you got lucky because I was going to say the same me. thing. I'm like, how the hell? Ben, Jada got her camera on, but Ben ain't got her there. I, mean, I don't even know what my. Ra- man, listen, Nothing my razors excuses. are down in the car, bro. My, 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 my beard looks like it's 30 days old and my. I don't I look want to hear that. Come on, 
man. Y'all in these fake ass beers y'all talking about? Rebecca, you muted, by the way. Are y'all in these fake ass beers y'all be talking about? Y'all got a groom. If Bubba can look up looking you like You got a good beard. When your beard is raggedy, you got to work extra hard, James. Oh, you got a good beard. Damn, James. that. You know what they, you know what they call it? They call it body dysmorphia. Bubba, we ain't investing in the beard. Body dysmorphia? James, all we got to do is have one. Just, just pull up a, an old picture of Ben from like. You don't have a beard, ago. James. You got the best beard out of the crew. What are you talking about? I said a beard bonnet. Wait, does, that wait, 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 you got a beard bonnet. <laughs> wait, you yeah. got a no, beard? I thought you said. Yeah, I got said a beard. that again. I can't be walking around here, baby face. Oh, yeah, look like I'm like twelve <laughs> hey, um, years old. Wait, David, you looking have like a, beard? a shaved testicle. Has <laughs> <laughs> a beard too. Yeah. What you said, shaved testicle? <laughs> looking like a shaved testicle. That's how I look when I shave my beard off. I ain't gonna do that shit. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the after party, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> that is live, by the way. We still. jumped deep in. We we, we jumped to the, the deep end. It's, <laughs> it's very deep. The, the deep. Are they part swollen of it. from the from the te- No, <laughs> no Ben, just, let it go. What the hell, Ben? <laughs> See, you give a mother sucker an inch, they go a damn mile. <laughs> no, I'm talking about. Yeah, I'm just Every talking time. about the Trinidadian testicular fiasco. Yeah, That's it's a callback. <laughs> it's a callback. <laughs> Anywho, yeah. Dwayne, we're gonna miss you, man. Dwayne's gonna be gone for a couple of weeks. This is uh, oh, he's been announcing it, man. But we're gonna miss you in solidarity with you, and, and we're excited about your new journey, brother. Yeah, me too. Um, yeah, yeah. I don't know if I'm gonna miss you. How you feeling? Not, but I'm just, I'm, just I'm just playing. I'm just playing. That's the light skin right there. Nobody. I don't like that. Let me I stop. Gonna, I ain't gonna have time to miss nobody. <laughs> Be, oh no, yeah, you're not right. gonna have time. Not I, not with no, a new You're mom. gonna miss everyone. That's why you're yeah, you're, you're that's diapers. why look, that's why you sticking up oh, for me yeah. and stuff. Cause not on a on a bad on a good day, you, you nah. would never say nothing for me. Okay. Nah, I'm, I'm look, when say, the four AM mornings go. You. Like we could we could talk about you, you know what I mean? But Ooh, we not we're not about to let the outsiders just come for your neck like that. <laughs> that's right. But, that's right. That's right. No, no, at the end of the day, we are ratchet. At the end of the day, each of us in our own way are ratchet and have some severe problems. And if y'all pull up in our comment section the wrong way, we might pull up for real. Yeah. <laughs> I, du- I never heard Dwayne snap like that. Dwayne was ready about to transform to hey. the, the computer and get that guy. I already <laughs> knew it was something when Dwayne had stopped talking or saying something. And then I saw the comment pop up. I'm like, oh, yeah. I, I, I see what me. My, me lost as ever. So, yeah, I got. Wait, what's happening? What's that? Meanwhile, I'm being I'm being degraded in the comments section. I'm yeah. like, what the Charles. heck? What? Yeah. So, well, thank you guys for always having my back. I love you guys. Mean it all the time. Always, and, um, even though you get on our nerves, but always. Yeah, you and know, late. I know that I get on. I jump on them. <laughs> I tap dance on them, especially when I be having y'all come from the Ben Dixon show, and y'all like, where the hell is this all headed girl? Where is this girl? <laughs> even even the day, like we we was we was all over the place today. We was behind by like fifteen minutes, filibustering yeah, and all kind right. of stuff. And you still won't there when it was time. I was like, Damn, Rebecca. Man. I was like, what well, Rebecca? Rebecca my pa- it took my pastor twenty minutes to get his internet working. <laughs> 20, <laughs> I did a whole girl, twenty, interview. probably about thirty. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> so Ben texts. I'm me. in the background sweating but bullets. I'm like, I don't want Ole to wait that long. I didn't want Ole. Olay to wait that long. David's sending me slacks. Hurry up, Ben. Olay's waiting. And Rebecca's right. Look, and, and, and what's crazy is I'm surprised David didn't hit me up. So, because you usually, David's like, hey, not trying to pressure you or anything. <laughs> just wanted to get, give me a little bit of a time frame. Bubba calls me. And then Ben, back up. And I'm like, ooh, dang. Ooh, because well, I rolled out of I mean, for all intents and purposes, it is your day off. Yeah, yeah. Right. And I rolled out. Well, actually, I, um, so I stayed up late talking to that man <laughs> like i don't you know what i'm saying my nights have been nice and good and, you know but i stayed up late on the phone for work oh. and then after work took me a nice shower and then you know lit a candle and was like what's the hey and then that ended up being like two three hours of a conversation <laughs> and then boom Hi. i'm what i woke doing? up this rebecca morning eight like by 8 <laughs> 50 rebecca took so, it back to high school hey. they falling asleep on the yeah. phone and stuff yeah, no, no you hang go. up. No, you hang up. No, no, you hang up first. Yeah, no, no, you hang up. Right. Hey, did he hit you? Did he hit you back with a hey? Oh, anyway, that's a meta. That's, no, that's he funny. has a uh, he has a um he has the same accent as Olay. <laughs> so like it was it's uh I oh, like wow. to hear. It. Yeah, he's Haitian too. So um uh, that was pretty okay. cool. Yeah. Okay. Seven. <laughs> you normally go for the African brothers, the African angels. Yeah. Um, Caribbean or African, but um, no, sorry, Caribbean. And when I say Caribbean, 
uh, Haitian um, and, <laughs> and uh, or African. <laughs> And usually when they're African, they're more fr- uh, the French speaking Africans. That's usually what goes for me. So, David, when you give me these slack time <laughs> updates, you increase my anxiety, bro. <laughs> like, it's just me popping up. Click, click, 20 minutes to go, Ben. I'm like, bro, right. I have you, not had. You oh, wait a minute. Like, what channels are we streaming on? What channels are we streaming on? I need to know oh, who I'm talking oh, to. We're, 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 we're live. live. We're on the regular channel. I keep telling okay, I'm I keep glad saying I ben, we're live. Okay. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> okay. Gotcha. Right. No, I'll, I'll hold the rest of that to the patron party tomorrow night then. Yeah. I got to be in a certain mindset to, to properly oh, process man. all of those uh, notifications, man. But no, Rebecca, I know tell you guys. St- I know that Jamaicans are Caribbeans, but I was saying like my preference, and I guess it's because I speak. Creole I knew that she was getting, and it. I, 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 you know, I look now I'm in there. I, I guess because I speak Creole, and I and I want to raise my kids to speak the language too. <laughs> kind of like you know, like have that. Um, you since I'm, them, you know, you don't want them coming out talking about book, 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 patois. <laughs> No. And and Rebecca. Rebecca Bomba Clutch now, man, Rebecca. Rock and, 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 and no, it, it, it's the Rock. same in Korea. It's the same in Creole too. It's the same in Haitian Creole too. It's just in Haitian Creole. It's like we all have this um unified thing, but I really want them to speak Haitian Creole. And there are Jamaicans that actually speak Haitian Creole. So like I, I found a Bahamian who is um Haitian. So, you know, who knows, y'all? <laughs> who knows? <laughs> you better raise this glass. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Man, let's mm. run a clip oh, yeah. real quick. <laughs> hey, Dwayne, play that AP1, Dwayne. Let's get some ABCs going on. Let's teach all y'all ABCs. We said ABCs. <laughs> hey. Everybody learn yo ABCs. Start with A, then uh. end with Z. Everybody learn uh. yo ABCs. Start with A, then uh. end with Z. Yo A, yo B, hey. yo one, hey. two. Uh. A B C D E F G H I J K L M N O P Q R S T U B W X Y N Z. Yo A. I want to see the baby. Yo A, B's and C's again. A B C D E F G H I J K L M N O P Q R S T U B W X Y N Z. Yo A. Yo B. Yo one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. <laughs> you can't listen. My neck, my bike. That's all. <laughs> my back. Like, exactly. Okay, baby. Let's some learn some songs ABC you can't remix, and then be like, eh, eh. okay. Hey, oh, yo, hey, stop, hey. Yo, hey. Like hey, this. Hey, 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 hey. Don't stop. Don't quit. And hey, I was like, watch I was Kirk Franklin weird. remix that. <laughs> When that song came out, and I was literally like, my neck, my back. My nigga. back. And I was Look a my, child. Oh, wait a minute. I was a child. I had no business. No business. What, how old were you when that song came out, Rebecca? Huh? How, how old were you when, the, when that song came out? I had to be, let me see. Not old enough to be singing it, for sure. Right. <laughs> That's exactly it. right. Was I even I was in double digits yet? I don't know. I don't know. Probably wasn't. Oh, it's a possibility. Look, See, we were in college and she was in high school. We yeah, you're right. Yeah. No, she wasn't oh even God, in high wait, school wait, when we were in college. That? What was your first year no. in college? 98. 98. 98, yeah. I was yeah. in middle school. Rebecca was eight years uh Rebecca was eight years old. No, wait, ninety eight for college. Singing I, was in, I was elementary school, y'all. You were you were elementary school, Rebecca. Singing yeah. my neck, my back. <laughs> Mm. Watch my d- <laughs> wow. Holy cow mm. 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 Wow. Mm. So some songs you can't remix Obviously because we have no We have no I concern about song? the fact that they were doing the ABCs <laughs> We just know the song because they took it from, from That's all. You were in Florida from Rebecca Beach. No, the same, from was in Florida. The same reason yep. you got oh. 8, 9, 10, 11 year olds Running around singing Pooh Shiesty right now Talking about shooting people up Because that's oh. yeah. They get you uh-huh. early they do. Oh, wow. It's another and song I'm- by NBA Youngboy. Uh, damn, I can't remember the name of the song, but I played it at an elementary school, like a DJ at an elementary school every now and again. And these are, I'm talking about kids from kindergarten up to like fifth grade. And so when I tell y'all I played this song and these little kids singing every word, jumping up and down, I'm about to share the video with y'all all over the place. I was like, damn, Man. I ain't even heard this song, but y'all over here bumping it. <laughs> wow! No, that's crazy. You know what we sound like? Old people. Um, and uh, <laughs> damn, right. <laughs> sound like my mom and my daddy. Damn. Right now. And, and so you know, back then, the our everyday. parents used to do the same thing to us, but now look at us. And you know, it's very interesting to me because I am still standing strong on you know I love freedoms, and we're still like pretty young, but um, I love the freedoms of uh, kids and all of us and things like that. But I don't like. Yeah, they ain't, my kids ain't that free. I I'm sorry. I My don't kids like ain't gonna help me. The yeah. kids on TikTok 
do full like you know grown folks dancing i ain't talking about the little tiktok dancing i'm talking about full grown folk dancing right <laughs> yeah. like yeah. you know yeah. throwing <laughs> little kids throwing little booties and doing all kinds of stuff i don't like to see it i don't like to mm-hmm. see it i don't like to see it but they're like you know like they're, they're, they're <laughs> creative freedom and now Get i feel like clicks. i'm a uh, yeah, I'm an old lady because then I like I feel like I'm not appreciative of this type of art, but it's not art to me. They're babies. They are babies. Stop <laughs> setting up your babies to do this to get three million views. Like, stop it. You're exploiting your children. No, man. Three million views. So pays, they want this somebody money. Mortgage, yeah, to be honest with you. Say, right. They want this money. Three million views. That's it. about thirty five thousand dollars. Right. Get Y'all, them three million. Put that in the college fund. Because I, I I'm about to get my little niece to start reviewing toys so I can get some. I'm about to hell. I'm about to start twerking. Hold on. Exploit them. For Three million kids views. Things. Exploit them I'm for kids things, but do not exploit them doing grown folk stuff. I hate to see yeah. that. Like I, fact. I don't that's like to see that. I, honestly, that's yeah. just my opinion. What happened to the for me. Logos or the little barrettes and the little puppy dresses? Now they oh, wearing the same clothes man. as they mamas. It's crazy. Like you know, <laughs> how your mama no, you got right, Rebecca. over outfit and you yeah. got one on too. Yeah, it's crazy. Y'all wearing mm-hmm. this, <laughs> different colors, same same cut, fashion over outfit, just a different shade of color. Hey, little little babies in bustiers. But look, I saw a baby right. in a thigh high, thigh high socks. I said, now we doing too much. Thigh high, sexy socks. A baby. Yeah, we are some tradition. We are some old. We old. We really are some traditional old folks. But it's a good thing. I'm with you, Rebecca. I ain't saying nothing wrong with what you're saying. But you ain't gonna see my right. babies out here now. You'll see me twerking. I, hey, for three million in, views, I will drop it back like it's hot and look back at it. They put in full wow. laces or wigs on the baby who ain't even grown her edges in yet. I just can't I'm trying to get off the no children, Rebecca. Let's move with the people. Let's look at AP3. I don't know what AP2 is yet. Y'all got to tell me what that is. <laughs> Do y'all know what AP2 is? Who knows what AP2 is? Paul James. <laughs> I don't know. I don't you, remember what that one is. Okay, yeah. let's go. Let's let's go to three. Let's go to the cruise twerking, and then we Blind have a baby. Twerking, what the hell? Let's go to AP three first. Oh yeah. Oh man, it didn't work. Damn it. Oh man. Oh, what are we this is what happens with TikTok. Lit. Just kind of cut it, cut it. Slow motion for me. Oh, Slow all right, hold on. I'll play without the audio because he was about to get it. That, 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 he okay. was. Hold on. That dude was about to get it. I think. Hold on, y'all feel it. James, you might have to put a trap beat underneath it. Uh, I was under, he could I don't know to. about a trap beat because it, it's not yeah, a trap was, beat that he was twerking. Oh, it's not the kind of twerking you can put some. Queen <laughs> he ain't twerking it. Huh? Oh, okay. Some who? Uh, Dwayne. Some queen. <laughs> some queen. <laughs> And he definitely have to play it before I like after that. The I'm afraid. Oh. Mm. I'm hey. Hey. Here they go. Hey. Hey. Get it, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. Get it. <laughs> <laughs> What's the glass? Hey, well, hey, I'm, I'm give me a start, You started this song at the perfect point, like it's supposed to go I with this did. video. <laughs> doing it. I'm the hey. shit. Why yes, I am. Yes. Why they Let me tell y'all something. <laughs> Mess with me. Mess with me. I'll be out there just like that. Boom. Splitting off. What's the glass? <laughs> That's the point in that split. <laughs> Girl, not. Oh my God! Like, oh man, yeah. that's great. Run it back. Here we go. That's it. It went over repeat. I thought the black man was gonna it do was, the dancing. Oh, no, it was when he kicked the baby. shoes off of me. It, yeah, when he kicked the sandals off, he already knew what was about to go down. Ooh! Here you go. Bim, 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 bim. <laughs> oh, it's no, it's that move right there. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not doing a handstand. <laughs> Look at that. It's the split. It's the split for me. Listen. I live for a good split. Oh, oh man. The split did it for me. The split did it for me. Listen, the, the split. Rebecca, you be like that at the club. I used to be so good at the split. And now, honey, I, ooh, I can't. I got to do a half a split. Because I can't. If you don't the split. stretch them legs out like you used to, you are, you're not, you're like, it's, it's so hard. It's so hard. Hold on. Yeah. Wait a minute. Did, was that a full split that he did? Or he did I a thought full he did split, a half split. Not a half split. He did oh a God. full split. A full split. God, yeah. See how easy it is my to inf- infiltrate God. black culture. It, mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you see how? But do you see how it's still no matter what? It's kind of like you know how they say Beyonce is always on beat or such and such. The black kids always on beat. You know, whatever, whatever. But I can't say that for. Um, <laughs> 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 it's the handstand for me. 
It's the handstand for me. It's like right here. We be giving these people like, honorable mentions, right though. <laughs> yep. Because he ain't really dancing. <laughs> I mean, he good, I guess. You know, Look, but Dwayne, honorable why, mention guy. Why do we always have to do this? Give them people they credit and move on. Okay. And I mean, he did, he did go into a split and he did back. Hey, that split, split was bananas. That, but that give him a little bit right there. Now, he probably, I'm going to already tell y'all, I know he gay. Because he's the way he bounced on that split. Okay, girl. <laughs> And it looked like, hey, man, wait, 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 wait a minute. Okay, so I'm gonna stick to the half split because I've been working on the full split. <laughs> He's saying oh, he's bad. I'm not. Ben, what's going on? Ben. Ben. Nah, so look, I've so never look. been able to do a full split, James. Hold on, I know. I've I know never been. Have, I've been doing half split. I know we having fun and all, right? But all them black people around him, that's us, like in the United States. And, and him dancing right there, that's our politicians that, that we, you know what I mean? That's it. And we just, we just around there cheering like, oh, yeah, look at, look at what they doing. And, that, that, and then he probably, he probably, he probably in, the, in his little cabin be like, look at them niggas out there. Oh. You know I mean? so, look, that's, look, look, at how, look at how easy it is for us to be fooled. <laughs> Sorry, oh, man. Y'all ain't gonna have wait, me. Wait, 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 wait. I gotta ask so a question, Dwayne. Dwayne, Dwayne, Dwayne. I'm just saying. You can't be Dwayne, leaving on Dwayne. Dwayne. I'm you just saying. Somebody must have. It's somebody that did You're not wrong. wrong. No, <laughs> no. Somebody did wrong yesterday. <laughs> Look, I, Dwayne said he gonna make. Hey, I'm gonna be gone for a Dwayne while. Dwayne said he so, tired of seeing this. So I gotta make sure the people miss me when I'm gone. That's all. <laughs> right. That man did a full split, y'all. That man did a full split like it was nothing. I feel my 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 groin is screaming screaming on his behalf. Wow. That man, I, was that was that alcohol or meth? What? what never mind. I'm sorry. Oh, next, next what? Dixon. It's, it's on a cruise, man. It was probably. Alcohol. I'm joking. I'm joking. He was Damn having a good time. Man. Next clip. <laughs> just on the cruises? The ones with the meth did have the teeth missing and everything. <laughs> Actually, they're doing all kinds of crack on. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you, you know they got meth on that crack cruise ship. What are you talking about? You go on anyway. vacation, and there, I was offered so much type of drugs on the resort. Okay, these wife was like, "You want to do a little bit of? I got that stuff." I'm like, "Oh, I don't do that." Amen. Like, well, we're gonna go hit it real quick. I'm like, "Weed? Nah, nah, no, we're on nah." They were like, hey. like, "To do the drugs?" I'm like, "Oh, you want an eight ball guy? Hey, hey, guys, hey, guys we got eight balls over here." <laughs> I'm like. Okay, <laughs> Rebecca, you're around the people. I got going two. What you talking about? You got eight. I got two. What you talking? <laughs> These are parents. I'm afraid of this next video. Parents, the people that were um, thank you, Dwayne. I, I, I caught it. <laughs> the people that were talking about the drugs and the um the hard drugs uh, at the resort that I was at, and mind you, it's a five star resort. <laughs> But um, people drugs. that were talking about it, they were their <laughs> parents. They were two parents with kids, and they're like like oh, the. The whitest parents you can ever find. They were just like, yeah, but I got the stuff. Like, what do you like? We always do it on vacation. We always do the Wait stuff on vacation. Okay. Like, Hang like, on. Speaking of vacation, what is that new movie with um with the wrestler Lareo. John Cena? Oh my! Yeah, and the real here. Yeah, that movie is and hilarious. Yeah. And Rebecca, it's the that exact movie same thing. Cry. What you talk about? It's the exact same uh, scenario. You talk about Rebecca. friends. Oh, vacation vacation friends. friends. Yes, that is the funniest movie. Oh I cr- I gotta watch that again because that made me laugh so yeah. hard. But that's exactly what happens. <laughs> you know, when you go on vacation, it's crazy. Like, mm-hmm. it, especially if you're with a partner and you find another couple, they are going to try to be like really friendly with you. I even was yeah, offered are. for people. People are strange on vacation. They was friendly for. They're looking to unlock. Unlock. They're looking to unlock yeah. a new achievement <laughs> on that yeah. uh, vacation. <laughs> What happens on the beach stays on the beach is what they stays on the beach. Yeah, I can't. When I'm on the beach, I like to like you know be on the beach, like you know have a good time. I'm a drink. I'm gonna do all that. But the heavy drugs and the sexual extra activities with other people, (laughs) no, that's wild. That's wild. Uh, Rebecca used to be you. Were you like a deaconess or a missionary uh, mother at a church? Like, cause you 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 are. I mean, I'm right there with you. I'm not saying anything that you're saying I don't agree with, but I did not realize you were as traditional and old-fashioned as I am. Yeah, I'm traditional and untraditional in every single way. Mm-hmm. Okay, every single both way. at the same time, both on. At the same oh, time. that's right, because you you we Way said it on the show. Time. You said you're you're righteous and righteous and ratchet. There you go. Yeah, all right, and, and I love it, I but there are some things I just will not <sighs> stand for, and that is going to on the vacation and being hit on by a white strange couple trying to take me to their hotel room. I will not. I will not. And I had to stay away. I met them and had a good time, and I stayed away from that particular couple for the rest of the trip. I would see them and be like on the other side, like it it was crazy. You're going to end okay. up uh, 
Uh, anyway, that, that, yeah, let's watch that movie again. I love that movie. Um, it's a I good was, movie. In the movie, she is yeah, pregnant. Oh, what what if it was I don't a, end up doing anything like that. That was crazy. What if it was an <laughs> African was couple? Crazy. Huh? Oh, what if it was oh, an oh, African it couple? Uh-oh. No, it, I just want one, and that the one person can get anything they want. I'm not adding extra people to anything. <laughs> well, I mean, let it wait. be Bay. And the, and the only, we're only still bae. public. We're still public. We'll save the rest of that before because because you know. So you know. I got a anyway, story go too. We went to the nude beach. Uh, Did get nude, don't worry. But went to the nude beach in Miami, <laughs> and there was this black couple. It hadn't been a white couple, probably would have did, but it was this black couple that were beautiful, and they were giving us like, like you guys want to come down with us and get a Corona? Uh, <laughs> sure. <laughs> you know what? That sounds like the beginning of an interesting Cor- friendship. Corona and, and 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 what was it? Corona and uh, Fireball. Fireball. That's what it was. When I tell oh. y'all. It was nice, Rebecca. It was nice. <laughs> what was nice? A drink? Girl, yeah, it yeah, was nice. Drink. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know what, guys? I don't have time for your shenanigans this morning. Okay? I don't have James time. said he's living in the year 3000, Rebecca. You need to keep up. I, oh, man. <laughs> I don't... Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Have you well, really my wife and my pastor though, were on this episode, never, so I have no comment. Have you really Love lived if you never went on vacation back. in like your early twenties and just let all your inhibitions go? Have you even lived? <laughs> <laughs> Are you even alive? Uh-uh, I was mm. saved really throughout my twenties. Oh, you said I'm you saved now. I told y'all before I used to be a heathen, so don't, don't mind me. Yeah. But it's so, so different with men and women, even. right? It's, it's different. It's different with men and women, right? I had my wild time. I can't lie, and it wasn't. It didn't have to be on vacation. Um, but you know, it was. It, it was. It's different with men and women. Like I meet a lot of guys, and so this is uh, what they say about women. We always talk about we got. We've gone through a whole phase, right? And men's little whole phases are very extended. I mean, they go from season to season <laughs> to season to season. Um, but um, I feel like um, women have gone through like a, a whole phase at one part of their life. And if they haven't, they're going to, right? And when I say whole phase, I don't say that in a, a bad way. But that's just a time where you're having a good time, hopefully protected, um, but having a good time, enjoying yourself. If you're out, you know, it's just like whatever it happens here stays here. Um, and it's unregretful moments that you probably won't do again. Um, but yeah, like, so yeah, everybody has that. I've gone through that. <sighs> All right. All right. We all know everybody. <laughs> you know, huh. somebody, was saying, somebody was so somebody was saying, like, um, you know, um, when you're exercising, and it's been such a long time, but then you just hit a stretch real quick, and then you just remember the last time you were in that position. That's oh, I saw I that video. <laughs> that hip, that hip, that hip stretch. That <laughs> Dang, I remember that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That that anyway. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm afraid to say it's the end of the show because every time I try to end the show, I get cussed out. So I'm just gonna sit here and let y'all tell me when I can go. <laughs> yeah. Look, anywho, uh, the gr- so y'all want to watch the gorilla twerking real quick? It was the gorilla really twerking though? No, no, I'm gonna tell you something. <laughs> it's the, it's kind of awkward to me. Really twerking though. There was a Drop lot it. happening in that video, and especially after what we just talked about, I don't think. Oh yeah, yeah, I thought about that too. Hold, hold that. Is that the one where the gorilla was trying to tease the her her uh, her was male that counterpart? Really twerking, though? Okay, no, that one. She, that that wasn't twerking. Was that was a sexual escapade. But then, but then someone put some music under it too. Oh my god. <laughs> I don't want to watch it. Maybe I guess we got to watch it. Now. <laughs> do we go? I guess we. Watch we it? Or do we just say hell, f it, and let's go home? I th- we're already home, Ben. We God already damn it, Rebecca! You are every time you, audience. every time you mess up going forward, I'm gonna call. I, I can't, I, I'm you not at home. <laughs> okay. Okay. So listen, listen, listen. I'll say this. Can we just stay on for like maybe five more minutes? Um, I don't want to stay leave. with you, Rebecca. Thanks, David. You okay. Well, leave? thanks, Dwayne. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but ben, I want you, you too, Bubba. Ben, if you want to go home, you could go home. Bye. <laughs> no, stay on. Ben, ben, I'm gonna listen in. I'm gonna listen. Could have been ben. on your way home already. We can't even see what you're doing. You could have. You could have been <laughs> exactly. driving. But we saw what James was doing. But can't see what the hell Ben doing. Yeah. Y'all gonna leave me alone, man. I look like death warmed over. It's been a. It's been a long. Three, and I want to so hear that. I, that said. <laughs> God damn. So what else you want to talk about? I really, so, no um, <laughs> so I don't have anything much to talk about. But I just, um, I just wanted to just. You just want to hold us up. 
Yeah, I just want to hold you guys up because I don't want to. <laughs> I have to go to work. So, um, well, this is going to be our last yeah, time for a while before we we get to hang out with Dwayne uh, for, for how many weeks, Dwayne? Because uh, uh, you know, America don't believe in in leave, but weeks. we do. Um, two weeks. Two weeks. Yeah, but y'all gonna be in good hands. Uh, no, he man, has to be day, on leave. Tune day. Why is be, it only two weeks? It's only two weeks because that's that's what I. I chose like yeah, I, we tried to know, okay because I'm about to say you know how Ben does Ben don't give uh, yeah, nah. maternity leave or paternity leave he likes to you know <laughs> <laughs> Ben look that's look I'm not wait. gonna stand beside you on that one Bubba he does he, Ben gives more than um God knows how much time off us that's why you don't be seeing us on here for real so <laughs> Ben is and then when I, like, and, these, and if anybody if anybody needed some time off, man, good God about it. So so please thank y'all for letting me use my avatar this week. Cause uh yeah. Uh but that's it. Mm-hmm. Rebecca, you got somebody I mean, just you called stay? you Krillin, Ben. Oh yeah, they, that, that's that's uh <laughs> Goku. Always Krillin, Goku. Uh, just in the chat room. <laughs> no, I know, I know Krillin, me Krillin. That, that kind of made me laugh. But Krillin is like, you know, the boss, the boss boss. So but um wow. Sorry, Krillin made okay, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, kind of. Uh, yeah. But um, um, I mean, he got skills, but you know, he ain't. No, he ain't know. Goku. Cat <laughs> Karat. He's Super not Saiyan um, Vegeta. <laughs> I like Vegeta. Vegeta, <laughs> Vegeta was kind because Vegeta was kind of fine to me. Look at Rebecca talking about uh, Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> I love Dragon Ball Z. Go Piccolo was Vegeta. I, li- I like Piccolo. Piccolo, Piccolo was like, I'm so tired of y'all stupid asses. That's every episode. He just looked like he wanted to just kill everybody. Just That's over it. Like just over all of them. Like y'all just over it. He was like, y'all are all idiots. <laughs> idiots. Majin Boo. Goku. Y'all remember Goku. that? Goku. <laughs> oh, Majin Boo. Yeah. Majin Boo. That was a series they right called there. That Majin the, Boo the, was scary. They, a lot of people called that. The, uh, I'm not going to say it, but um, Dwayne, um, <laughs> are, you forward, are you looking forward to being I'm um, leaving y'all. A dad? Okay. <laughs> of course. You going, James? Of course. I need to because I got to log in for work, unfortunately. Um, yeah. Well, I guess so. Rebecca, if you come on time next time, oh. then you can feel Dwayne's that fulfillment that we had. Weeks, well, Dwayne, first I off, it was her day in. off. Ben, I just ain't gonna so be I'll working. Have to- I have to uh, stick up for Rebecca. It is a day off, so I can't. We can't blame her for being because she came in on her day off, just like me. I can't I get away with day, shit I'm on my own on channel. Nine thirty. Like, what's up? What's what's tea? Y'all pulled up. I can't get away with can't. nothing on my channel. <laughs> it's, <laughs> your, it's your channel. Mm. It's your channel. Ben. I can't get away with nothing here, but that's the way I like it. I love it. Listen, but I, what I what I will get away with is saying goodbye. Y'all yeah. have a great rest of your day. Thank All y'all. Right, See y'all you tomorrow night so for the Patreon party. Dress nice. We'll see y'all there. Dwayne. Congratulations. Yep. Yep. Good luck, guys. We love you, brother. Costume, too. <laughs> <laughs> I will. I will. All right, y'all. Take care. All right, y'all. We love y'all. We mean it. Dwayne, Dwayne, Dwayne. Brother, we gonna miss you, man. But happy for you, dude. I'm proud of you. So, man, make sure that you do your damn thing. Do your thing. You always let us know. You know we got you out. And everybody else, man, we will see y'all tomorrow. Remember, there's no show in the morning. Slut. Halloween party tomorrow night. Patreon.com. Slash like and not patreon.com slash so you can get access to the party man. We love you, y'all. We mean it. Dwayne, love you, brother man. Take care of yourself and congratulations again. Deuces, y'all. We out.